We're going to have a break first before I'm on, right, Jimmy? Okay. The yellow one is Pikachu. He's a Pokemon. Yeah, who is Digimon? Thanks. Digimon is like a different group, wholly separate from the Pokemons. Thanks for clarifying that. Sure. Place 4,000 place. Actually, Digimon means digital monsters. Like a lot of organizations, ESPN was having trouble with their carpet. Ow! Ow! So they had me install a more natural surface. <laughs> this grass we install is the best. It's a good Bermuda. No hot water on that, OK? Yeah, yeah that'll set the stain. It lays down very, very pretty. Still to come on Sports Center, the rest of the night in the NBA. Where we are, I mean, there's nothing more beautiful than grass. Discover card. Saturday mornings at 10.30 on ESPN. <laughs> He's a field goal kicker. What's so amazing about a field goal? It's 63 yards under pressure. Under pressure? pressure. pressure. I never said more than five words to a field goal kicker in my life. Like, go get me some water. And hurry. <laughs> Guys, look, I got $40. Says none of y'all can hit from half that distance. You got it. I'll take that. It's a bet. <laughs> Guys. Oh, I believe you're up. <laughs> Pretty far. <laughs> Overcast, little drizzle, temperatures in the 50s and going down as the night goes on. And speaking of going down, the undefeated teams in the Pac-10 have two Saturdays ago. Two of the five teams fell from the Pac-10 perch in Washington and Stanford. Last week it was Oregon. A moment ago, UCLA on the farm. And there stands Washington State undefeated atop the conference. But as you see, if Oregon wins, we'll have five one-loss teams in the Pac-10. Hi, everyone. Mike Tirico with former UCLA quarterback David Norrie. Let's talk about the four unbeatens nationally losing. Washington State, one of four perfect teams left now, David. They are, and 
with the strength of schedule left. Remember, they've got a game against UCLA. They've got a game against Washington with the losses that have gone on in front of them. They could jump up into the top five in the BCS standings if they win against a caliber of team like the Oregon Ducks. So it's almost unheard of Washington State talking about a national title, but it's in their grasp if they can come up with some big wins down the stretch. Two gutty quarterbacks, high-scoring offenses. Let's start with Jason Gesser. Well, Jason Gesser's a perfect quarterback for the spread offense. He makes great decisions at the line of scrimmage. Very talented talented throwing arm, 19 touchdown passes on the season, but with his feet, he can really hurt you, making plays, getting outside, throwing the ball on the run, and picking up yards down the field. Joey Harrington and Oregon have to bounce back from a loss at home. They haven't had to do that since 97. No, and it was a devastating loss. Special teams last week for the Ducks might have cost them a chance at the national title. Joey Harrington has to get things back on track. Probably the most exciting quarterback to watch in the country. If they can roll things out, win, run their course, get wins down the stretch, they're still in a position to play in one of the BCS birth games. So a big game tonight for Oregon as well. There you see the head coaches, Mike Bellotti and Mike Price. Bellotti, age 50. Price, the dean of Pacific 10 coaches. And what do you think each coach, David, would like to see in the early going of this game? Well, I think both coaches want to really establish a run game. Obviously, they've got talented quarterbacks. They've got passing offenses that can put up big numbers. But the teams that make plays on defense here tonight, the team that makes the plays on defense and the team that can get running game going, I think they're going to have the advantage. Oregon will be kicking off to Washington State. And Jared Siegel, who's had uh, 13 of 31 touchbacks this season, set to kick it. You mentioned 97 the last time we've seen a loss for Oregon at home. And they come to Martin Stadium, which sounds a like like Austin Stadium, here this afternoon. A short kick, which is fair caught at the 30-yard line by John Tippins, the running back. So on comes Washington State and the quarterback David was talking about Jason Gesser making his 18th start. He's 11 and 6 His 265 yards per game leads the Pac-10. This is the number one passing offense in the league. Gesser a Hawaiian to uh, one of the best high schools in Honolulu St. Louis where it was undefeated. First drive of the game for Washington State will start from its own 30. An offense that scores 44 per game. They run Tippins on first down. He gets three to the 33. Let's check out Tippins and the rest of the skilled position players. What great receivers. Nicole McElrath and uh, Colin Henderson, James Price, the tight end field bar, and then the one player not there, Mike Bush, who is such a devastating, game breaking player, averaging 20 yards per catch. Former basketball star, current basketball star, as a matter of fact, for Wazoo. Second and seven. Guess whose first look was covered? He'll keep it and get the first down across the 40 and to the 41. David Moretti made the tackle. Here is the battle in the trenches. An offensive line for Washington State. Important player to watch is 69, Philip Locker. He's in. For the injured Joey Hollenbeck, who will not play, Parrish Hunt, Roach, and Armstrong with him. The defensive front, little wrinkle for Oregon with Zach Frater, dinged up by a concussion. You may not see as much of him as you would in other games, but the left side of that defense with Frater and McEwen is its strength. After Gesser scrambled for a first down, from his own 41, with four receivers in the pattern. Well covered, now directing traffic. Almost pulled down by McElrath. The senior has 112 yards per game. Here's the back seven. Mitchell, Moretti, and Mallard. The three M's are the tape. They need to keep this together for Oregon, up front especially, because behind them it's pretty good. Rashard Bowman is short. He's 5'8", and you folks in the Pac-10 know. Stanford went right at him with Teo Johnson. Washington State's going to try the same today. Keith Lewis is back in the lineup after missing the last game because of a left ankle sprain. After the incompletion, second and ten. Yes, there's been pressured here in this first drive. Oregon wanted and will get a flag for intentional grounding. 
the ball did not cross the line of scrimmage. And our referee is checking with the linesman to make sure of that. And that is correct. And a heck of a play by the middle linebacker, David Moretti, coming with pressure right up the gut. And Gesser did get out of the pocket. As a quarterback, if you get out of the pocket and you get beyond the line of scrimmage, no flag. Well, looking at plenty the of game solutions here, David. Looking at the game solutions, Washington State wants to make Joey Harrington move. They've got to get him out of his rhythm. That will be free. And the second key to the game for Washington State, Dell game solution, they got to take care of the football. Washington State is so great with their mix of run and pass. Mm -hmm. If they take care of the football, they don't turn it over. They're an awfully tough offense to stop. Well, that penalty is a 15-yard flag, so third and 25 as it comes with a loss of down. And that was a rule change coming into the 2001 season. They take it back 15 yards from the spot of the foul, loss of down. Needing to get across midfield to keep this first drive alive. More heat on Gesser from the corner. Smith almost had him, but finally the sack comes all the way back at the 11. Darrell Wright ends up getting the job done, his second sack of the season, but the pressure came from the corner blitz by Steve Smith. And Oregon, a pretty maligned defense, especially coming off that game last week against Stanford. A lot of run yards racked up by the Cardinal. And the key today for the Oregon defense is you see the pressure. Darrell Wright, the talented defensive end, the key will be going man-to-man -man on the outsides, taking advantage of the talented corners and bringing extra men up on the line of scrimmage to get pressure on Gesser. Alan Cox punting with the wind. Fabulous kick over 50 yards. Keenan Howry, who was great last week, is a marked man here today. Special teams tackle for Carl Pema and Taliena for Washington State. Pema made the play. Let's check out Joey Harrington and the Ducks. 20 and 3 as a starter. His first start two years ago came against Washington State. His team is fourth in scoring, 10th nationally in scoring, fourth in this league. It tells you that among the high-powered offenses in the Pac-10, Oregon is, as expected, one of the best. And, and just like Washington State, this Oregon offense thrives on their ability to run and pass the football. They're incredibly balanced on offense. Drive start from the 39. Harrington tries the big ball right away. Intended for Howry, but incomplete. Man coverage step for step from Eric Coleman, the sophomore from Spokane. Let's take a peek at the men on the offense with Harrington. Mo Morris averaging 85 yards a game. Ontario Smith will spell him. And he's seventh in the league in running yards per game. Line the blocker. Justin Peels caught eight touchdowns this year. Then you have Willis and Howry. Willis really more of the game breaker. So much attention on Howry because of his special teams exploits as well. But Jason Willis is having a fine season for the Ducks. Second and ten, first run of the game is Maurice Morris. A couple of tight ends block for him and Morris with a pretty good game. Here is the offensive front. Banged up group, Adams and Schmidt especially, but when they need yards, watch the left side, 71 and 67. Here's who they go up against, a defense that leads the conference in rushing. Those defensive ends come off the field in passing situations. And the men who come on help Washington State to 26 sacks this year. Best in the Pac-10. Third and a yard with two tights and one back. Harrington in the drizzle gets a first down across midfield. And Lamont Thompson takes him down at the 47. Well, David talked about Washington State earlier. Let's uh, set the table for Oregon uh, offensively and defensively here with the Pontiac Game solutions. Now Oregon has to turn the page. They have to get over the loss a week ago. Devastating loss. They too had national championship aspirations, but they still have BCS possibilities. And the second key, if Washington State gets a run game going, it could be an awfully long night for this Duck defense. Mars first down, run big hole. Oh, the fullback Josh Line just got into the second level and gave him a lot of room. 
First down, Lamont Thompson made the tackle. Here is the rest of the defensive front. Number 12, Ira Davis, is maybe the most important linebacker tonight. His job to slow down Justin Peel, the very good tight end. These guys have had interceptions all year. 15 of them, Coleman, Newman, and Thompson have three apiece, and one for the sophomore, Jason Davis. A lot of two tight ends here in the early going, and it's worked for Arden. From the 36, Harrington thinking about the big ball. He puts it up for grabs, and it's incomplete. Jason Willis was out there, but the heat was coming from Ryan Long, the left tackle. And Ryan Long off that defensive tackle position, a nice move inside. This is play action. A little fake inside to Maurice Morris, and Joey Har Harrington was looking back across the field, trying to go deep to Howery. And this Washington State defense, the big difference is the improvement along the defensive line, especially the defensive ends. If you get caught in obvious pass situations, they can really turn the defensive ends loose with their speed and athleticism. Second and ten pass to Willis. Got a nice block from Keenan Howry to allow him to get out to the 30-yard line, a pickup of six. Third and four coming after the Billy Newman tackle from the strong safety spot. And you look at the numbers for Washington State. Through the first five games of the year, they look very impressive. In fact, they're giving up less than 100 yards per game on the ground. But Stanford, as, as the Cardinal has done to a couple high-powered teams in the Pac-10, really exposed some weaknesses. And then Montana State, a Division I AA school, gave this Washington State defense some problems a weekend ago. Five receivers, even though one's a tight end, one's a back. The pass is incomplete, intended for Jason Willis, coming back towards the ball. From here, it would be a 47-yard field goal. And Jared Siegel does come on. Harrington stays on the field because he is the holder. And Siegel, 4-7 of seven on the year. Very few field goal attempts, only... Uh, essentially one per game for the six and one ducks and Mike you, you kind of had to think that Oregon would be working on special teams a bit over the course of this week and the coaches definitely confirmed that into the wind it will be a pooch punt and go out of bounds and the ball will be spotted somewhere around the 18 yard line actually a little bit higher than that no score opening quarter in Coleman gotta have fun a little bit of celebrating does not bother the me. the game itself is fun the game these are great athletes playing the game of football that's a celebration that's fun that's because you ain't got no rhythm man <laughs> it's about individuality Chris it's you, called you, professional you football act like a professional I'm right? talking about professional and organized and disciplined <laughs> they're kids let the kids have some fun I'll show you some fun oh no he didn't <laughs> I no he didn't <laughs> <laughs> This room. Nice. Yeah. And we're back. Alabama. College Game Day, presented by Discover Card. Saturday mornings at 10:30 on ESPN. <laughs> He's a field goal kicker. What's so amazing about a field goal? It's 63 yards under pressure. Under pressure? Pressure. I never said more than five words to a field goal kicker in my life. Like, go get me some water. And hurry. <laughs> yes, look, I got $40. Says none of y'all can hit from half that distance. You got it. I'll take that. It's a bet. <laughs> Guys. Oh, I believe you're up. <laughs> Pretty far. <laughs> Look at me, I'm a football like this. Feel so free inside. Hurt, <laughs> <laughs> look, it's you and me. I have to go. I have to go, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's you and me, Kurt. I'm a football like I did. <laughs> Presented by Discover Card. Saturday mornings at 10.30 on ESPN. Back in.
Ken Pullman. Scoreless between Washington State and Oregon. Mike Price surprised me when he uh, told us again yesterday, uh, if you think back, there were big games in the Rose Bowl season just a few years ago, but this may be as big a non-Apple Cup game as Washington State's had at Martin Stadium, certainly in his tenure. First down toss is to Dave Minnick, who we heard would be in the lineup, and he is back in the lineup for Washington State after sitting out the last couple of games because of injury. But Jason Gesser in this game in Pullman last year, they're playing here back-to-back -back years, had his season come to an end, a broken leg and a significantly sprained ankle. It was a, a huge loss for Gesser in Washington State to Oregon at the tail end of the season. Final score here at Martin Stadium. Last year, 27-24. Second and nine. And Gesser got time to throw it to McElrath. Across the 30 and to the 33. First down for the senior from La Jolla, California. Leads the Pac-10. Catches and yards per game. Now that was an exceptional job by McElrath of driving on the cornerback. And he's working against one of the best in the country. Bowman, number 17. Issues the deep threat, comes back for the ball, and Gesser with some nice patience in the pocket, waiting and waiting, and then delivering the ball outside with authority. 48 catches on the year for McElrath. First down toss to Rome Riley across the 45. That'll move the chains as well. Keith Lewis and Wesley Mallard, they're on cover. Now Washington State, the big difference over a year ago has been the play up front, both defensively and offensively, but the wide receiver core was a question mark as well. And players like Jerome Riley, McElrath, Mike Bush, the basketball player, they've turned this not into a, only a talented group of wide receivers, but a very deep group. Riley's 14th catch on the season. He comes to the bottom of the screen for first and 10. McElrath is the move man. And they run Minnick left side. Twisted down. And essentially no game. Kevin Mitchell made the tackle. So Minnick in on the second series. Now he's going to check out for a moment for John Tippins. We were told by Mike Price that we would see Minnick to uh, help bolster this best offense in the conference and the fifth best running game in the Pac-10 this year. And Mike Price has an offensive line and a trigger man. He's so dangerous just by the design of the spread offense. Second and 11. Tippins in coverage. Pressure is on. Up for grabs with no Washington State receiver out there. Oregon is heating up Gesser. That's the second time we've seen a Steve Smith corner blitz. And when Oregon uses a corner blitz, they like to bring number six, Steve Smith. Watch the right side of your screen flying into number 17, Jason Gesser. And as a quarterback, when you're dropping back and your blind side is out to the left, you've got to keep a feel and keep some vision out to that blind side because Oregon will bring corners quite a bit over the course of an afternoon. Cougars need to get to the Oregon 43 to keep going on this drop. Three-man rush, incomplete, intended for McElrath. Washington State will be asked to kick it away again. Allen Cox's first punt equaled his season-long 55 yards. Senior from Utah. Just under one of every three inside the 20. It's the goal for this kick. Again with the win. And heading towards the sidelines. Howie fielded it on the bounce. And steps out of bounds. Only gained three on the return, but may have saved five or six if that ball got by. Timeout from the Palouse. Monday Night Football, they brought in Dennis Miller. So we decided to give our show a little shot in the arm. So while Serena sits at home with an injury, Venus Williams is advancing the finals. Tennis racket! Yeah! NCAA basketball, big dance. And you always have to try new things. You always got to tinker with it, make it better. The Bulls basketball look. Uh, why? Why are we so bad? You know what? 
It's a very subjective thing. Next Sports Center, one hour from now with Carrot Top. I'm Carl Ravitz. Thanks for watching, folks. Woo! Smart! Put yourself in the hot seat of ESPN's two minute drill. Feel your heart pump and your adrenaline build as you race the clock. Now you can be in the hot seat at home. ESPN's two minute drill, the ultimate sports quiz show, comes to the PC with ESPN's two minute drill CD ROM. Test your sports knowledge with host Kenny May and other ESPN personalities such as Rich Eisen, Tom Jackson, and Charlie Steiner. ESPN's two minute drill CD ROM. Available wherever software is sold. It's college football season, and that means classic Friday tailgate, only on ESPN Classic. Every Friday from 1 to 7, witness the greatest game. Touchdown! The Snake does it again! The greatest players and the greatest rivalries in college football history. It's the classic Friday tailgate, every Friday from 1 to 7, only on ESPN Classic. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Pontiac. What would you do with some Pontiac excitement? Budweiser with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. Circuit City, we know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're here with you. And Morgan Stanley, formerly Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. Move your money. Get well connected. Colors of autumn here in Pullman, Washington. As Oregon takes the field for its second drive offensively. Mike Bellotti's team, 31 yards on the opening drive. More on the ground than via the air. Marsh comes left. Waited for the holes to open and picked up about five yards. Lamont Thompson made the tackle. Second and four ahead. Well, this is kind of make sure that your head's in the game early because Oregon could be pouting after last week. Very good game. Very good start. 21 points in the first quarter. And then it was a house of cards. Special teams disaster. A couple of punt blocks as the special teams broke down with Jose Arroyo getting two kicks blocked. And an onside kick as well that allowed Stanford to come back, score 21 in a row, hold off Oregon 49 42 for the rare home loss in Eugene that hasn't happened since 1997. Morris again carries. This will be a first down at the 25 yard line. And uh, David, you discussed it uh, early in the week. You think that's a very important storyline coming into this game? Oh, it's an important storyline because when teams get hit with such a disappointing loss the tendency is to come into that next game and also let down as well and Oregon has some big things in front of him Washington State has a high enough ranking right now both in the BCS standings and the polls that if Oregon can get a win they can get back into the mix and remember Oregon still has a game at the Rose Bowl against UCLA coming up first and ten for the 25 Arrington nice ball fake a pass underneath to the tight end, George Reichster, hurdling the would-be tackler and taking it out to the 43-yard line. Billy Newman played hurdle in a track meet, went right over him. And the big man at 6'3", 245, has a first down. Now, Reister is a guy that you like to get out into patterns. He has good athleticism. Watch him leap Newman, the strong safety right here. Oregon, not as much depth this year in tight end as they'd like to have. They really only have two tight ends that they can go to. And Peel, of course, very talented. Young kid by the name of Willie Walden might be a tight end of the future for this Duck program. Scoreless here in the Palouse. Four of the eight undefeated teams have lost today. Will Washington State be the fifth? Nowhere to run for Mo Morris there. Second down coming up after the Tupo Tupo tackle. Monday Night Football on ABC at 6 Pacific. Day after tomorrow, we'll bring you Tennessee against the leaders in the AFC Central. The Pittsburgh Steelers. Jerome Bettis is going to be mic'd up. And you'll hear some of that at halftime and see the bus take on the freak, Javon Kurtz. Six Pacific, Monday Night Football on ABC. Joey Heisman. That was the talk preseason. He's been solid this year, as you saw. 16 touchdowns, five interceptions. Morris is getting to the line of scrimmage undeterred, but a lot of Cougars waiting for him there. 
Led by James Price, the weak side backer from Anchorage, Alaska. Now Maurice Morris, tailback for Oregon, is trying to jump into some uncharted territory this year. Wants to become the first back to go over 1,000 yards twice in an Oregon career. And he's still on track in the tandem of Maurice Morris and Ontario Smith. They're averaging a little bit over 185 yards per game. So all the talk about Harrington and Howery on the outside, the running game still a big part of this Oregon offense. Third and five, Sammy Parker came out of the backfield. He's a receiver on the right side. Harrington goes that way, and that may be, it is, a yard, well, it should have been a yard shy of the first down. That, if it's up where that linesman is, is a horrible spot. And it is first down Oregon. Oh, that is brutal. We'll have to take a second look at that. Billy Newman playing like a cornerback on the outside. Remember, he's a safety. And watch the break on this football. And no chance. <laughs> he's in between the 45 and the 50, and he's marked out, touch of the 46. Yeah, they gave him a good one or two yards extra on that spot. And Mike Price still having something to say about it over on the sideline. They all even out, Cougar fans. Long way to go here this afternoon. Morris, a couple of yards, not much more than that. Second down coming up. That was Ronald Smith, who the uh, senior, who's been injured, and he is in the lineup coming off the bench. Well, the Washington State safeties are two players you really like as a tandem, David. I really like them. They got combined six interceptions on the season. They're very aggressive. Newman will come up and smack you. And, of course, Thompson, you go all the way back to the Rose Bowl season back in 1997, and in that Apple Cup game, three interceptions, 12 tackles, and really arrived as a freshman. Missed all the last year with a mysterious neck injury. Run for Mars. We waited for the block from Justin Peel and has the first down at the 31. Justin Peel's caught eight touchdowns this year, but you see the tight end in a blocking role for the senior Mars. Now Maurice Morris is a classic slasher type running, running back. And Ontario Smith, very tough in between the tackles. Maurice Morris gives you more of an outside, a perimeter threat. And he's got a great feel for setting up his blocks as he did on that play. Ducked inside, then took it out to the edge. A nice good block, a little fistful of jersey for Justin Peel inside where <laughs> the referee couldn't see it. Yeah, they might have missed one there. It's all right. <laughs> that happens all the time. That's, that's in some ways good technique. From the 32, first down throw for Harrington. Screen set up, and Morris dropped it. They had some blockers, too. And one thing this Oregon offense is exceptional at is that play right there, the screen pass. Well, the Oregon Ducks have always been a great screen team. And, and the secret to the screen is, of course, getting the quarterback to sell the pass, but also having big athletic offensive linemen that can get out and get downfield and get blocks. And they had a nice play set up there. Harrington, a pretty tough throw, backpedaling and put the ball on the money. Morris just got to hold on. Joey, three of seven in the early going. Second and ten, Ontario Smith is now the tailback. Washington State walks a lot of guys up to the line. Harrington hit as he threw it, and it's incomplete. Had to get rid of it quick for Sammy Parker because of Ronell Smith's pressure. Well, Oregon's going to max protect. They're going to keep Josh Line in. He's going to get a piece of Billy Newman at the top of the screen, and contact comes on delivery. That was a one-receiver route, Mike. If Sammy Parker isn't open, Joey Harrington's either going to have to eat it or just throw that ball away. That's part of the good matchup here. Oregon offensive line stingiest in allowing sacks. Washington State leading the conference in sacks with uh, 26. And you got to give some credit to Joey Harrington. He helps his offensive line. He's great. Quick delivery. Doesn't take a lot of sacks. So offensive line deserves a lot of credit. Joey Harrington deserves credit as well. Third and 10. They bring pressure. Harrington stood in there. It was tipped as he threw it and incomplete. Billy Newman helping to bring the heat. Coleman back to the coverage. It all worked for the Cougar D. A week ago against Stanford, Oregon had a one-point lead. A little over three minutes to go in the game. A third and one on their own 30, trying to salt the game away. Joey Harrington was hit in the backfield. The ball deflected, intercepted by Stanford. They cashed in, and Stanford pulled off the upset. And that last play looked eerily 
similar to the pick last week in the fourth quarter against Stanford. Jose Arroyo to punt. They don't have the regular punt return man, Colin Henderson in. Defense has stayed out, anticipating a fake. Arroyo trying to get it inside the five. No chance. The net is only 12 on that punt. Cougar ball in the 20. No score thus far in Pullman. Every Wednesday night from 9 to 11 is Wednesday night college football. It's game of the night only on ESPN Classic. Classic rivalries. Touchdown! Classic legend. Classic bowl. The snake does it again. <laughs> The only place to be for the greatest games in college football is ESPN Classic. Wednesday night college football. Every Wednesday night from 9 to 11. Hey, Boilermaker. Yeah? Got my curve breaking two and a half feet. Oh, yeah? Then you have been practicing, huh? But don't give me no baloney about a curve breaking two and a half feet, though. For how much? Ten bucks. Make it 20. We got a bet. Baseball tonight, every night at 10 and midnight on ESPN. A great slugger, we haven't got. A great pitcher, we haven't got. A great ball club, we haven't got. What do we got? We've, We've got, got heart. heart. All you really need is heart. That's when the grin should start. Now you're getting the idea. Baseball tonight, every night at 10 and midnight on ESPN. Saturday at 12.30 Pacific, the Pac-10 game will be Oregon State. We'll see if they can turn the season around against Southern California. Florida State, Clemson, one of these two Big Ten games available, either Michigan, Michigan State, the Wolverines holding off to beat Iowa, or Illinois, Purdue. That's coming up next Saturday on ABC, home of the Bowl Championship Series. <laughs> what a day this Saturday is. Wow. With four of the eight unbeatens losing, and Washington State... Obviously, with the destiny in its own hands, four remaining games, including today. UCLA coming to the Palouse next week, and the opportunity to be the team out of the Pac-10. Guesser first down, slipped and fell as he was loading up for a deep pass. Had two receivers going long, and they slipped on this field turf, which is a combination of a natural and synthetic grass with a rubber base. That was installed here two years ago. And yeah, what a nice surface it is. The last couple of days, the weather's been beautiful for a late October in the Palouse. But today, we've gotten a little bit of moisture on the field. And these players, both Washington State and Oregon, not, not unfamiliar to this type of territory and a slick turf. So they'll make adjustments. Four receivers for second and 21. And Gesser runs Minnick. Dave Minnick out to the 25. We got a bunch back. We have third and five coming up. John Saunders had the best seat in the country today watching all these great games, and they're still going on. That's why we stick around, Mike. We don't want to miss a bit of action here on the Burger King Update. South Carolina and Tennessee. Phil Petty here's seven yards to Derek Watson, who really fights his way over the goal line to tie that game at seven apiece. It's gone to halftime. That's where they stand right now, Mike. Thank you, John. The winner there joins Florida as one loss teams in the SEC. The Gators beat Georgia in the world's largest outdoor cocktail party in Jacksonville earlier today. Blitz coming again. Gesser's pass complete for a first down to the 34-yard line. Easy pitch and catch. Rasuli Webster made the tackle. Now Colin Henderson is a possession receiver. They like to line him up in the slot. He can play all three wide receiver positions. And a nice job of finding that little void in the zone defense, sitting down, giving his quarterback a nice picture, and Gesser delivers it right on time. Washington State brings in a couple of tight end look for this first down. And Gesser making an adjustment to the play. Tippins. Tries to reverse his field, but Quinn Dorsey 
just stayed home. Rasuli Webster came up from the rover spot. And the junior from Santa Monica has a gain of just a half yard. Well, tomorrow, looking forward to this, USA's Michelle Kwan, Sarah Hughes, and Sasha Cohen head the field at Smart One Skate America. It's 2.30 Pacific tomorrow here on ABC Sports. You'll have golf and figure skating on the network tomorrow afternoon. Mike Price, Dean of Pac-10 Coaches, trying to get his overall career record to 500 with a win today. Gesser throws just behind Henderson and incomplete. Look at the early numbers for Jason. As you've watched him, David, uh, give me the former quarterback's view of this current in the long line of Washington State quality QB. Well, he's not your prototype Washington State guy. Usually Mike Price likes to bring in a, a big guy like a Drew Bledsoe, Ryan Leaf, 6'5", 6'6", Dan Tall in the pocket, move some. Gesser's a little bit smaller, but he does a lot of the same things well that Bledsoe and Leaf do, had done here with their feet and with the throwing arm. And the marker is down. I believe that end moved. Josh Parrish. Up there on the left side at the tackle spot. He's going to make it third and 14. Here is Mike Price on the junior quarterback from Honolulu. Our quarterback's the man. I, I, I love Jason Gesser. He's just, he is another great competitor, and he will find a way to win. He broke his leg in this game last year. And uh, so this is kind of a special game for him. And it's back in the same stadium, two, two years in a row we played him here. But he's got great quickness. He's like Fran Tarkington. Love it when the coach says, our quarterback's the man. That's great. <laughs> Pretty special game, too, when you're 7-0 and and looking to move up into the top five in the BCS standings. See what the man does here. Third and 14. Good coverage downfield. Nobody to throw to. Gesser takes off. Taken out of the 38. It's going to be about seven sh short of a first down. Gesser took a hit over there on the sidelines and is slow to get up. You just heard Mike Price talk about Gesser getting hurt in this game last year. Let's see what happens as David Moretti hit him. Well, Nick Aliotti, the defensive coordinator for Oregon, said what worries me this week about the quarterback is not the passing game, but Gesser's ability to run and break the pocket. But you pay a price. Every time you tuck the ball down at the college level, the pro level, and Gesser trying to pick up some extra yards there instead of ducking out of bounds. And, and that extra two or three yards... You know, that can end up costing you. So the Washington State training staff came over from the other side. Mike Price is now walking over to the Oregon sideline to take a peek at his quarterback. And uh, the classy thing, the Oregon folks were over there. Mike Bellotti also with a word for Mike Price. Rare that you see two head coaches have a conversation there during the game. But I was down on the field talking to these two guys pregame. They are just super class guys. Uh, taking one last look. Gesser has the option to duck out of bounds, but look him, look at him lower that left shoulder, and it's that late hit. It might have been Wesley Mallard coming in the second duck defender to arrive, and Kegel's going to be warming up here in a hurry. It is fourth down, so they will punt, but Matt Kegel, who probably was at the point where he was going to take the next snap for Washington State anyway, he plays a series at the start of the second quarter every week. Ryan Leaf's cousin, from Haver, Montana, getting warm and uh, maybe getting some action here. You think maybe shoulder here, David? Yeah, it, it looks like, you know, always hate to guess about injuries, but it looks like a right shoulder that mm. took the brunt of the impact when he hit the ground. Guesser gets up and uh, classy as well. Those Oregon players, there are a few Oregon players who were clapping their hands when Guesser got up to all fours. He jogs off the sideline, so we'll uh, keep an eye on him. His legs are okay. It's a it's a question of whether uh, that throwing arm is okay, and that would be a tough pill to swallow if he was injured, knocked out of this Oregon game two years in a row. Here's Cox again to kick to Howry, and if Keenan gets his hands on, hold on, because he had 69 and 81 yard returns last week. Kicks have been fabulous so far. From the 15, all Howard can do is fair catch the 45-yard punt. Again, it's been with the wind for Washington State here in the opening quarter. In two high-scoring teams, Washington State averages 44, Oregon 39. 
nothing on the board yet and a quarterback who's in pain yeah jason gesser but with the look on his face he does not look like he's ready to come in for this next possession man. it's like he's having to deal with quite a bit of pain right now and i more and more if i look at it mike i think it is that right shoulder watch the scores go by on this uh, truly shocking day can't overstate it There's four of the top 12 in the country four of the top eight in the BCS knocked off Maurice Mars little option six yards as Price and Thompson are over there to make the play BYU remember they're still undefeated 7-0 playing San Diego State here in a couple of hours it's BYU Washington State Miami and Nebraska, the four remaining unbeaten. And Joey Harrington and company would like to see those four go down so the one loss teams can have a new lease on their championship dreams. And big push for the Heisman early season, well documented for Joey Harrington. How about Eric Crouch for Nebraska? Catching the throwback. Big win against Oklahoma. 20 to 10 in the first of our Saturday triple header. Mars dancing through the hole gets across the 30 and has a first down How about the moves from the senior from Chester South Carolina who lit it up at junior college before he came here 3,700 yards at Fresno the all-time leading JC rusher nearly by uh, 4,500 all-purpose yards in those couple of seasons. Well, and he's getting some good help early here from his offensive line. Adams and Schmid. Weaver didn't practice at all. The center for Oregon. But the offensive line early has looked impressive for Oregon. Josh Line, the fullback, leads the way. Got a nice block as Mars has another first down at the 40. How about the tight ends and backs joining the O-line here in this opening quarter? And Morris did such a nice job of stretching the defense wide and then cutting back inside. I mean, he has all the tools to play at the next level. He's got the size. He can be a bruising back, but he can also stretch it wide. And Morris off to a heck of a start this afternoon. Kegel talking with Mike Price. He'll go in no matter what the next series. And Oregon's going to let the clock run down, so they have the wind at their back to continue this drive. Oregon more offense in the first quarter. Washington State's quarterback banged up, and no score after 15. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message. In a word from your ABC station. I'm Dan Patrick here in the ESPN Radio Chopper. Radio marketing is all about promotions. That's why we're blanketing the country with these ESPN Radio Packs. We've got live sporting events. We've got call-in shows. You can log on to ESPNRadio.com and find out more about stations in your area. Or you can listen online. So tune in. And if you happen to catch one of these bats, enjoy! gotta have fun a little bit of celebrating does not bother the me the game itself is fun the game these are great athletes playing the game of football that's a celebration that's fun that's because you ain't got no rhythm man <laughs> <laughs> it's about individuality chris it's you, called you, professional you football act like a professional i'm talking about professional and organized and disciplined <laughs> they're kids let the kids have some fun i'll show you some fun oh no he didn't <laughs> I no he didn't <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Sports Center is, is live four times a day, but that doesn't mean the other seven broadcasts are straight repeats. It, well, here, look, in this live show, Brian Kenny has his pen in his right hand, but in the rebroadcast, I put the pen in his different hand. And here, then, Linda Cohn is presenting with John Anderson, but in the rebroadcast, I replace John with El Macho Baracho, the winningest cockfighter in all of Mexico. It's all about keeping it fresh. That's what I do.
Jason Gesser has not gotten off the bench except to go right back there on the phone. The report from the sideline is just the wind knocked out of him. Well, Gesser has a good chance of returning. Second quarter starts the way the first quarter ended with Maurice Mars, who had 76 first quarter yards, running for two. We'll have a second and eight coming up for this Oregon offense. Ryan Long and Fred Shavies in there on the tackle. This is an Oregon team who uh, has not struggled offensively, to say the least. 24, lowest point production of the year. Last three games, they scored 63, 48, and 42. But both defenses, which uh, knew what was coming today, a lot of offense, have answered the first quarter call. Harrington's pass is caught for Sammy Parker, broke a couple of tackles, and got to the 44. First down, pick up a 14 for the sophomore from Long Beach, California. Now Sammy Parker is the one wide receiver on this roster that can take a short pass, a hitch, a slant, and then take it the distance. He has that type of speed. And in fact, he didn't prepare much for the Pac-10 outdoor meet. Ran eighth in the 100 meters. So he's got definitely track speed on the outside. And... You get a little look there at Harrington's arm strength. He can make those flat throws out to the outside. He's got the arm strength to take away the angles on the defensive backs. Play six of the drive. His first down play action pass and the home run for Keenan Howry. Incomplete. Eventually got a step past Eric Coleman, the sophomore. I love Joey Harrington. You saw him after the last play, the thumbs up, the okay. Very expressive quarterback. Might annoy the competition, but really endears himself to his teammates. Yeah, he's one of the most animated quarterbacks that I've seen in a long time, at least quarterbacks that can play at this high level. And when you talk about the guys that are prototype NFL passers, there's only three or four that have first-round talent. Ken Dorsey down at Miami, Joey Harrington, of course, and you got David Carr at Fresno State, maybe Kurt Kittner at Illinois. A couple of tight ends with the one back, second and ten. Mars got a block and got to the 38-yard line. Ryan Long and Billy Newman made the tackle. Well, the quarterback is getting the job done. He's got third down coming up. And here's what Mike Price thinks about Joey Harrington. Well, the most impressive thing about Joy Harrington to me is his competitiveness. Um, you know, last year he didn't have a real great game against us, but the year before he came in and, and I just thought, boy, that guy's special. Just the way he plays, the way he runs around and hoots and hollers and stuff. He plays kind of like a cougar. <laughs> well, Harrington had come <laughs> off the bench for his first two comeback wins in his sophomore season, then got his first career start against Washington State, and it was 52 to 10. They need to get to the 34. Harrington put it up. Parker broke free and couldn't adjust to the ball. Harrington couldn't hang in there because the pressure was coming. Randall Smith, who's been injured and out, has really gotten some pressure blitzing three times now. Now the key, a real big key for Washington State is to not let Joey Harrington get in a rhythm. And Randall Smith, it must be great for Mike Price to see that talented linebacker be, get back in the lineup. Harrington had Sammy Parker wide open. He just didn't have the time to deliver the football. Junior from Van Nuys, California, Jose Arroyo. No problem there. Trying to get it inside the 20. And no chance. A touchback. He doesn't believe it. It's the truth. And it's close. Will come to an end this weekend. But that doesn't mean you have to leave the worldwide leader in sports at home. Because the news, interviews, and analysis from your favorite ESPN personalities continues all day, every day on over 600 radio stations nationwide. Check your local listings to find the ESPN radio station near you. ESPN Radio, take it with you. Get into the zone, the ESPN zone, the ultimate sports dining and entertainment experience. Eat great food, watch any game that you want, and compete in our sports arena. ESPN zone, what more do you need? Visit the zone in Baltimore's Inner Harbor, in downtown Chicago, in New York's Times Square, in Atlanta's Buckhead District, and in downtown Washington, D.C. 
Get into the zone. But baseball, it's mark of time. This field, this game, it's part of our past, Ray. It reminds us of all that once was good. It could be again. Oh. People will come, Ray. People will most definitely come. Baseball tonight, every night at 10 and midnight on ESPN. With Jason Gesser getting the wind knocked out of him, Matt Kegel set to come in at quarterback. But as we mentioned before, this is normally the drive. First drive every second quarter, every game we've seen Kegel. But there has been a game, David, where he had a little more action this year. Yeah, against Oregon State, Gesser had a stomach injury, an abdominal injury early in that football game. Kegel came in for a series or two. Gesser came back. But then in the third quarter, it became apparent Gesser couldn't go all the way. And Kegel had to finish off that game, the win against the Oregon State Beavers. Henderson in motion. He can throw. Has thrown seven times in his career. And this is his eighth completion. The prior seven have gone for touchdowns. And Kegel's on the run. Down to the 18. <laughs> Colin Henderson now eight for eight. Five touchdowns in his career. This is a great catch in traffic. That's Wesley Mallard, number 18, and the free safety Keith Lewis. Two great athletes. And how about Gesser going up and making this catch? Henderson gets his right foot set, throws back against pressure. And that's an acrobatic catch by a quarterback. You Keegle. talk about an athlete. Kegel made a great catch there. First trip in the red zone for Washington State. And they run Minnick up the middle, across the 15 into the 14. You know, back to Sorry. Colin Henderson, who threw the pass for a second. He's from Puyallup in Washington, where you had all the Hewards and Luke and Brock, of course, at the, at the quarterback position. But you see those career numbers. He may be the best quarterback <laughs> to come out of the, out of that uh, great, great football high school. You know, his quarterback rating, David, is going to go up now. And coming in, his career quarterback rating was 709. <laughs> seven for seven. Now he's eight for eight. And, yeah, check that. That was obviously Kegel coming up with the big catch, but what an athletic play to go up against two defenders and make that grab and trap. Back on the field for second and seven. A delay with Minnick. They ran right into the charging ducks. Quinn Dorsey, who's been active so far in this first half. So Kegel a year ago came in in this Oregon game when Gesser went down with the broken leg and then the following week went down to the Coliseum in Los Angeles and guided the Cougar team to a huge upset win against USC. Didn't have quite as much success in the Apple Cup game against Washington. Washington won that one handily, but Mike Price feels very comfortable with Kegel in the game to the point where he'll give him a series at least each ball game. Third and ten. We haven't seen Bush yet. Incomplete. He was looking for McElrath out of the slot. Mike Bush, the split end, hasn't caught a ball yet. Didn't have one thrown his way. Here in Pullman, Washington at Martin Stadium. Washington State, one of four teams with the dream of a perfect season still alive. Oregon hoping that it can nick Washington State, get some help with the other three teams, and make it a free-for-all among the one-loss teams. Kegel disappointed, but Mike Price says we have a chance for points here on Drew Dunning's field goal attempt. From 34 yards. And the man who was put on scholarship a couple of weeks ago by Mike Price, he turning his free ride. These big games in late October and into November, sometimes they don't turn out the way that they're planned. And we figure this would be a high scoring contest. The special teams figure to play into importantly, and field goals may be the difference. Dunning splits it right down the middle. 
for head coach Mike Price and the Cougars take an early lead. We talked about the story with uh, Price and Dunning a couple of weeks ago. He was going to give Dunning a scholarship anyway. And he looked at him and he said, you make this 42 yard field goal and you're going to get a scholarship. And Dunning <laughs> didn't know and he wasn't knowing that well no matter what happened he was going to earn the scholarship at some point. He turned around, made it, and then looked at Price and kind of rubbed his uh, four fingers and his thumb together and said, show me the money, coach. <laughs> and Mike just bust out laughing. You talk about a pressure kick. Well, a lot of attention to special teams. Adam Holiday, the kickoff man, that's all he does is kick off. He's a weapon. He's and definitely a weapon. And he's on scholarship because of his prowess. He's kicking into the wind here, but still gets it all the way back to the goal line. It's pretty impressive. Ontario Smith took one back last week. I think Washington State worked that all week. Only out to the 20. We're talking about Washington State and the great tradition of quarterbacks. Here's our Athlac trivia question. Who holds the Washington State single season reception record? And somebody's got to catch the passes over the years of Rosenbaum, the throw in Samoan Jack Thompson, and of course Mark Rippin and Ryan Leaf and Drew Bledsoe and now Jason Gesser. Who's the guy who did it the most in one season? Our athletic trivia question with an answer coming up. What would you like to see out of the Ducks and Joey Harrington here, Mr. Norrie? Well, they definitely have a run game going, and Harrington hasn't had a lot of time in the pocket. If Oregon, and I think you look at Oregon right now, they're going two tights, and that can slow down that pass rush from the defensive end. Very active opening half for Sammy Parker. First down and more. Across the 35 into the 37 yard line. Well, Sammy Parker picked up 17. Well, Harrington Just, is very accurate at the quarterback position, and he also has the arm strength. And when he got talented players on the outside, like Howery, who just threw the block there, a heck of a block, and he throws a nut, gets up and throws another. And then Sammy Parker with his rushing ability. Now, Harrington can get the ball out, get it in the hands of talented players on the outside, and then they go ahead and make play. First and 10 after the pickup of 17. Ontario Smith turned the corner. Ontario Smith knocked out at the 35. 28 yards later, the Ducks have a first down. Eric Holm in the hit. Now, what a luxury for Mike Bellotti to take Maurice Morris out for a blow and bring in Ontario Smith. And this guy has huge talent. Transfer from Tennessee. And you already mentioned, Mike, a week ago, what a kickoff return against Stanford. And it really looked at that point like the Ducks had things in hand. 14-point lead in the fourth quarter. It looked like special teams was going to be the difference for the Ducks in that game. It ended up being the difference for Stanford. Smith faked as though he was going to throw. I think that was intended for a pass. He kept it going and got out to the 31-yard line. Receiver kept going. Smith was fumbling it like he was getting ready to load up and throw a ball. Well, Oregon's, off, Oregon's offense will test you in many ways. And they use specialty plays. They like to use the screen. They utilize the tight end as well as any offense in college football. And of course, Joey Harrington outside the wide receivers is a pretty big weapon as well. You see this Nissan drive summary. It's been a couple of big plays. The first one to Parker. The second one a run by Mars. They were going for another big play on that halfback pass. This run Smith now between the tackles and edge him out to the 26-yard line. Be very close to the first down. Alex Nowey made the play. He's back in after injury as well. We told you earlier, skating and golf on ABC tomorrow. As for the golf, it's final round coverage of the Buick Challenge that you'll see live at noon Pacific. Joel Edwards has the lead at Callaway Gardens in Georgia. Davis Love the third, a shot back. Third and one for Oregon. Harrington option took the hit and took it for a first down. Paul came out. It is a fumble. And Washington State had a chance at it when it looked like Oregon was going to recover first. But Reister, Reister, I should say, following the play, came up with it. This is the second time Oregon has gone to an option play in third and short yardage. And the ball is definitely out. Slick surface. Ontario Smith had some thoughts of picking up that ball and running for a touchdown. 
And as an offensive player, you can advance a fumble just as long as it isn't fourth down. Ira Davis overslid the play, to use a baseball term, and Reister was uh, hustling behind him. And into the drive for Oregon. They can pick up a first down at the half yard line. Terrio Smith hit the hole quick. Got three yards. Now way was waiting for him. Now Washington State has jumped out and on top in this football game. And I know that Mike Price is over on the sideline right now as we look at the red zone offense. You talk, you talk about efficiency. 96% of the time when they crack the 20-yard line, they're coming up with points and a lot of touchdowns, as you can see. Only one missed field goal of all the visits to the red zone. Mike Price has to be concerned, though, about the way that this duck running game is getting wrapped up in the first half. Smith keeps going. Touchdown. Ontario Smith put Billy Newman's number 10 onto the turf at Martin Stadium and powered it for the go-ahead score. Now he flat ran over number 10. And from behind Ontario Smith, watch him lower the shoulder pad, get his level down. As a strong safety, you're supposed to be able to take get, take on a tailback in that situation. Smith with just brute force. Laying the wood to Newman. And Oregon breaks out on top. Jared Siegel's missed two extra points this year. Made 32, now 33 of them. The answer from the Ducks, Washington State a field goal, Oregon a touchdown, and number 13 leads by four. I can still feel his hooks in my ribs and taste the leather from his uppercuts. So why should I get out of the corner? Because I gladly take another three minutes of pain for a shot at a title. Wouldn't you? Friday Night Fights on ESPN2. College Game Day, Thursday nights at 7 on ESPN. All right, Mike, hour 32 of ESPN Radio's Hands on the Heisman contest continues, and so far we don't see any quit in any of these contestants. <laughs> Except for me. They quit soon. 32 hours. This is amazing how long they can stand there, let alone stand with their legs, and then hang on to something as well. It's very impressive so far. I couldn't do this. It's not so much the endurance. It's the ability to withstand the boredom. <laughs> For a check of the ESPN radio station near you, go to ESPNradio.com. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Nissan. Nissan introduces the totally new V6 Altima, the cure for the common car. Original cores, nothing beats an original. Aflac, without it, no insurance is complete. And Chili's baby back ribs, flame grilled and double basted with barbecue sauce. This sounds really good right now. Mike Tirico, David Nori with you. Pullman, Washington. A light rain that began about 45 minutes before kickoff was on and off. This is the steadiest it's been and probably the conditions for the remainder of the game. After the 80 yard touchdown drive, Washington State will get the ball back. After Jared Siegel's kickoff. First kickoff was short. This one with the wind is long and no decision to be made for Curtis Nettles. Another reminder of our Monday Night Football game. Six Pacific on ABC. Tennessee Titans have had quarterback injury problems all year. With Steve McNair coming off the win at the gun. And Pontiac over the Lions will take on the 
Central leading Steelers, six Pacific on ABC. Well, there's Jason Gesser ready to come back in after that one drive from Matt Keegle. If you're just joining us, David Gesser knocked out as he was uh, scrambling on third down, had the wind knocked out of him as a couple of players in the football got him right in the gut. And Keegle gets in for his opening series of the second quarter, and Mike Price has to be happy about coming up with points after that possession. McElrath on the run made a great grab, lost the ball out of bounds, and picked up about eight yards on the catch. Now they're going to go ahead and rule that McElrath was down because he definitely fumbled that football and the ball went out of bounds just past the first down stakes. It will officially be second and three. And play action fake. Dominic inside the swing pass. McElrath and the ball definitely came out when he was in the air. That really should have been a first down for Washington State, although they don't want to pick him up that way. <laughs> Not in the playbook. Minnick spinning forward he is going to be just shy of the first down. Well, a third and a yard coming up. Well, we asked the question all those great quarterbacks at Washington State over the years, who's the receiver who has the most in a single season? He's that man right there, Mike Levenseller, the offensive coordinator for this Washington State team in 1976 with Jack Thompson as the quarterback. He had 67 grabs. Yeah, he was quite a receiver here at Pullman. Two time first team all Pac 10 player and was a six round pick back in the late 70s to the Oakland Raiders. Taking over the coordinator duties this year. They just need a half yard and they'll get it with Minnick for the first down. A well, minute who's coming off the right knee injury. He missed the Stanford and the Montana State game nine days ago is uh, just a great story. Ex Marine age 27 originally from Stonington Connecticut. He graduated high school nine years ago in 1992. It's four years of basic training six months on a ship 34 days in Kuwait finally decided after his service to the country to get back to football went to the San Jacinto Junior College and he replaced Mike Anderson who also went from the Marines to JC Anderson's now with the Denver Broncos Minnick ended up transferring for his final couple of years here to Washington State Gesser putting it up for grabs incomplete McElrath was the intended receiver Smith the cover man a nice play by Steve Smith and a dangerous play because when you cut inside on a post corner route if you miss on that football you have no help behind you a nice play to come and make a make a break on the ball number one and to get a hand on it. Dave the quarterbacks are combined all three of them nine of 24 for both teams partially because of the pressure we're seeing from the front seven on each team but also the weather I think the weather and the steady rain as it picks up is going to be a bigger factor in the passing game McElrath they were wise to that Keith Lewis uh, or rather Wesley Mallard was on that play 18 not 16 made the tackle third down coming let's check our Pacific Life game summary so far a little trickeration Colin Henderson eight for eight in his career with passes to Matt Kegel who was in his normal series to start the second quarter that led to a field goal but then the full run by Ontario Smith to cap a seven play 80 yard Oregon drop I'll tell you next time Billy Newman the strong safety takes on Ontario Smith he's I assure you he's going to get his pad level quite a bit lower <laughs> third and a dozen Mike Bush has caught nothing he's at the bottom of the screen guessers heated up throws underneath and incomplete well it's man coverage downfield everybody else has got 17 in their radar and they're getting there and that's Steve Smith number six coming on the corner blitz once again bottom of your screen and making things awfully uncomfortable for guesser in the pocket and early in this football game, it's become apparent Oregon's going to bring blitzes. They're going to bring linebackers, cornerbacks. They're going man to man. And they're going to make Jason Gesser make the throws to his wide receivers on the outside. Chance for a punt return for Howry. This kick into the wind from Allen Cox, but still a very nice high kick. Howry from the 35. Could make a man miss, and he's brought down for a loss of three. Hamza Abdullah made the tackle. Oregon Drive starts from its own 30. When you come back to the Palouse. Hi, I'm Jeff Kent. 
and I'm here to talk about ESPN the magazine. You know, when they first asked me to do this, I was pretty excited. They could have had just about any athlete. So to choose me is really something. It's humbling to be able to give something back. So all you young players out there, listen up. ESPN the magazine is only a dollar an issue. They'll even throw in a free fleece. That's right, Jeff. Every when you call 1-800-504-6644, you'll get 26 issues for just a dollar an issue. So call 1-800-504-6644. Thanks for listening to me. There's only one neighborhood where the legends compete in the greatest games in history, ESPN Classic. Only ESPN Classic has the greatest games from the NFL, baseball, NBA, NHL, NASCAR, and fights from the largest boxing library in the world. Call 1-800-CLASSIC to get all your favorite classic sports. Plus, Sports Century, the Emmy and Peabody Award winning series that profiles the top 50 athletes of all time and beyond. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC today. Catfish, what a great arm. Who is that kid anyway? Of course he's got a great arm, Buttermaker. He's the best athlete in the area. But you don't understand. That's Kelly Leak. You guys talking about Kelly Leak? Yeah. That dude is a bad mother. Talking about a loan shark. I borrowed a nickel from him last week. He said if I can give him a dime by Friday, he'd break my arm. That's so bandido. Baseball tonight, every night at 10 and midnight on ESPN. Temperature is uh, going downhill quickly as this cool wind and chilling rain greet the spectators here at Martin Stadium, Pullman, Washington. Oregon six and one, coming off the loss to, UC to uh, Stanford, who beat UCLA earlier today on ABC. Morris Morris back in the game, his first down run gets another first down to the 46-yard line. Lamont Thompson made the tackle. Nope. Flag came down all the way back behind the play, some 25 yards downfield on the sideline. 25 yards downfield from the line of scrimmage. And Jay Stricker's crew spotted a personal foul on the Ducks. And Michael Lotti. Getting a running game going, a big first down run for Maurice Morris. And it's tough to tell whether this came before or after the whistle. You look at Dan Weaver working at center. He gets a block, and hard to tell where this came. It might have come after the whistle. I think it came as they were running towards that side because it was dropped way, way down the far sideline. Back about 30 yards away from the play. Well, coming up at halftime, we'll take you to New York. The Capital One halftime show with John Saunders and Terry Bowden. Check the scores and highlights of as big a shakedown Saturday as we've had in college football in the last five years. Eight teams started the day undefeated. Four went down in Oregon State. Or Oregon has a lead on Washington State, trying to make it five of the eight. Oregon much better offensively over a 90-yard advantage on Wazoo thus far. And with the weather getting worse, the team with the running advantage is obviously going to have the upper hand. And, and that's the reason why Oregon is leading this football game along with some great play from their defensive unit against a very talented Washington State offense. It is first down still. The flag came after... The Mars game from the 31. Harrington throws incomplete for Howie. Very good coverage by Eric Coleman. Keenan's personal space was very limited. Now the Cougars have two very young defensive backs playing at corner, and Evan Coleman is one of them. Look at him get the right hand in. I mean, he's not given much cushion playing Howie on the outside and on the outbreak. Coleman was right there to make the play. And remember, Marcus Trufant, perhaps uh, one of the top cover corners in the Pac-10, still out for Washington State. The pass to Sammy Parker. Out at the 39, it's going to be two yards shy of the first down. Spot him at the 40. He did go out at the 39. And the key part of this offensive 
passing game for Oregon is the blocking downfield of the wide receivers. And watch Howard. He gets a piece of Coleman. And then he comes back and he lays his helmet right on his sternum. So if you don't get him coming from one side, turn around and pick up the block again. And that sprung Parker close to a first down. Mike Price talked this week about making Martin Stadium sound like Oxen Stadium on downs like this, third and one. Morris is stopped. Well, Billy Newman got run over on the last drive's final snap. He ends this drive with a good one-on-one -on -one tackle. Yeah, Newman read it perfectly. And he'll be quick with his feet to get in position. And then he'll break down, get low, and get that helmet across on Maurice Morris. That's a super play by Billy Newman, the strong safety. Arroyo back to punt. Remember, two blocked last week. Washington State, a very good special teams unit. And whistles do blow for the delay game. We'll try it again. Dead ball, delay of game on the offense. Second penalty tonight on Oregon, both on this drive. I'll tell you, Mike, you, you, you watch Mike Bellotti, and he's as stoic a coach on the sidelines as you'll ever see. Fourth quarter game on the line, so calm and so composed, and, and I think that is a huge benefit to this Oregon program and the players. They, I think that they sense that he's calm, he's under control, and he was just that way late in the game in the fourth quarter against Stanford last week. Unfortunately, things didn't turn out well for Oregon. Everybody's leaving the center alone because you can't touch them. They try to come in from the sides, and Oregon's protection very good. Arroyo's kick fielded by Coleman at the 22. Trying to get some blocks. But out to the 28-yard line. A lot of work for the six-yard return. You see, Oregon State has uh, defeated Cal 19-10. The problems were... Tom Homo continue almost uh, certainly on his way out. USC with a big lead in Tucson. Always some gamesmanship with the with the punter <laughs> late on those plays. And <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. You mess with the bull and you're going to get the horns. I tell you, if I'm a punter, I'm I'm avoiding contact. Let's see if Washington State can find the answer against this Oregon defense. Tippins runs on first down and he can't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, David, this is an offense that leads the conference 44 points, 492 yards per game, but they've looked very ordinary and it's not their fault in the first half. Well, I think Nick Aliotti, the defensive coordinator for Oregon, has come up with a great game plan. And remember, he was the orchestrator of the defense, a gang green defense back in 1994, the Rose Bowl trip under Rich Brooks and bringing extra players up to the line of scrimmage in this football game. The pressure from the linebackers has been the difference. Gesser against the four-man rush this time. Gets it out to Riley and Jerome powers forward against Rashard Bowman. We got third and a couple coming up. Now Oregon getting a little bit sloppy on that play with their tackling and we go back to a week ago against Stanford. They had a lot of problems against the big Running backs for the Cardinal, Kerry Carter, now third and two, Brian Allen. And rest assured, Oregon was working on form tackling, going back to the basics in practice this week. Third and a long couple. They'll try to run for it. Minute, first down across the 45, into the 47 yard line. Washington State, the essence of the spread offense is getting to the line of scrimmage, counting the defensive numbers, and going with the run or the pass, depending on the defensive structure that shows. And Minnick almost lost the football there at the end of that run. Washington State starting to read things inside in the running game a little better. From the 46, Gesser adjusting the play. Arguments look like they're ready to fire in there. Minute gets a couple. 
Now Washington State has come with an interesting twist here. They've put in two offensive tackles at tight end. You see that big guy, light body going out, number 75? His surname is not accurate. He's not a light body. Six foot nine, 290 pounds. And Mike Price mentioned yesterday, along with Knotts, Billy Knotts, number 71, and they'd come in at tight end and they pack quite a wall. Not very dangerous catching the football, but good blockers. Here comes the pressure. Gesser goes down. An athletic play by Kevin Mitchell to elude the block on the way out. And he comes up with his third sack of the season. Well, even though Kevin Mitchell is only a sophomore, really the most experienced member of this linebacking core coming in. And what a play to go up high, leap a blocker, and make the play on Gesser in the pocket. Reister on offense in the first quarter, and now Mitchell in the second quarter have shown great athleticism. He just made Minnick fan on that block. Now Leoti, the defensive coordinator, continuing to put the game in the hands of his cornerbacks, man-to-man -man in the secondary, relying on the safeties as well, and turning those linebackers loose. And Jason Gesser is really feeling it. He's not had a chance to get rhythm. Typically, Mike, in this Washington State passing offense, Mike Price likes to go with deeper routes down the field, and Gesser's not getting the time to let those wide receivers come open. Well, next Saturday, you're going to see Oregon State take on Southern California. It's homecoming for the men of Troy. Florida State Clemson is the ACC game. It's all tied up in the ACC now with Florida State's win over Maryland. And uh, the Big Ten game will be Michigan, Michigan State. Game in East Lansing after uh, Michigan State won at Wisconsin today and Michigan held off Iowa. John and Terry have all the scores and highlights, including number four Virginia Tech's loss in Blacksburg. This has been such a fast starting offense all year for Washington State. They piled up a lot of points in the first halves of ball games. Kind of unbelievable to see three points on the scoreboard. Third and 12. Guesser, there's a timeout called. I don't see a marker down anywhere. I just see the linesman waving his hands to stop the situation. I'm out. Uh -oh. University of Oregon. Okay. What? Oregon took a timeout. Each team has a couple left. And if you were to tell me, Mike, that any team in the country would be able to hold this offense to three points with less than a minute to go in the first half, awfully surprising and. Mike Bellotti has to be thrilled with the way this game is playing out. This is a, as big a game as we'll see at least before November in the Pac-10. Looking at the remaining schedules for both teams. First, Washington State. They've got the game against UCLA and Washington. Plenty of opportunity to move up in the BCS standings. The UCLA game will certainly help that, as will this game in Washington and Arizona State. Has been good out of the league. Trying to, the Arizona State's actually been very tough at home, too, as a matter of fact. Uh, in Tempe, here's what Mike Bellotti's team will face. You'll see the game at UCLA on the 10th in Oregon State, the Civil War, after the three-week layoff on December 1st, and they will get Arizona State in Eugene next Saturday. And yeah, not as many opportunities in terms of quality games. The UCLA game, a big game, and an opportunity for Coach Bellotti to move up. But this game as well, Washington State, number 10 in the BCS standings. And the Cougars can come out with a win tonight in Pullman. They've got a great shot at jumping up into the number five or number six position in the BCS standings. Third and a dozen. Here comes the heat. Guesser's quick toss is incomplete. He tried to get Jerome Riley on the move, but he has not had any time to set and throw tonight. And that's one of the reasons Guesser's six for 14 here in this first half. Kevin Mitchell again, the inside linebacker, and he was coming on a stunt. Off the edge on the left side. Gesser's probably getting a little bit tired of seeing number 39 come free in the backfield. Exceptional job of punt coverage thus far. Alan Cox has had very good hang time on his kicks. This one not his best. Towery from the 22. Washington State south of the special teams. Coleman and Nettles the tackle after a four-yard return. 
We mentioned the Bowl Championship Series. Uh, this Super Shakedown Saturday with number two and three and five losing in the BCS standings today. Or one, I should say, Oklahoma with Nebraska moving up to number one. Michigan pushed at number eight, Maryland losing, and there's Washington State at number 10. Washington State was picked for 10th in the Pac-10 this preseason. Yeah, pretty, <laughs> they're tenth in the first BCS standing. Pretty shocking to see Maryland and Washington State in the top ten. 45 seconds will they run it? Take a few shots down the field. Ontario Smith, the carry for eight yards. No sign of a timeout coming from the duck bench. They may be content to take it into the locker room at 7-3. Well, with the rain, if, if it wasn't raining quite as hard, Mike Bellotti might take a couple cracks down the field. But the weather definitely changes the way that you handle your playbook and the play calling. Joey Harris, they're signaling a play to Joey Harris. We don't have to, guys. Half's over. <laughs> you, you can signal all you want. You can wave to me. Well, Joey Harrington's experienced enough to, to get involved in some of the decision making and if you're not going to take a shot down the field just let the half go here at this point don't even risk it the play pops off well, no run see if Smith can break one Ontario's pulled down at the 34 and off we go to the Capital One halftime report to Times Square Stadium in New York John and Terry a very very low scoring game in the rain coming down in the chili Palouse but if it's anything like the rest of the day around the rest of the country, you can expect almost anything to happen in the second half. Washington State, one of the unbeaten teams still remaining after the dust had cleared today. UCLA started the day thinking they were going to move on unbeaten. And after watching Oklahoma lose, perhaps moving up. But for Bob Toledo, things started to unravel early. Stanford fell down 7-0 after a turnover. For after that, they scored 31 straight points. Chris Lewis, 27-yard pass to Kerry Carter here. At one point, the game was 31-7. Scott McEwen, the backup quarterback, goes 27 yards to Brian Fletcher. And UCLA pulls to within 10 at one point. But then Kerry Carter, 27 yards in this touchdown run after they got it down to just three. That put things away. And Stanford, for the second straight week, a big win over unbeaten team in the Pac-10. John, I'll never put my faith in UCLA defense again. I thought they were fantastic. They were going to win all their games. They were thrashed. Absolutely. You see Chris Lewis, the backup quarterback, because Fasani was knocked out last week. Now, here's what else is going on in the Pac-10. Oregon State, a winner over Cal, but just 19 to 10. And USC at halftime, leading Arizona 31 to 13. Carson Palmer with a couple of touchdown passes in that game. When we come back, we will break down the entire day, including four unbeaten teams who would lose on this day, including UCLA. It's all coming up on the Capital One Halftime Show after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Now, your first source for round-the-clock sports news is even better. The new ESPN News. A brand new look with the enhanced bottom line that's always on and lets you know what's ahead. Constant score updates and live in-game stats, highlights, news conferences, analysis, and more. The new ESPN News is here. They are Saturday soldiers prepared for battle, fighting for every pass, every yard, every touchdown. Be part of the action with ESPN Game Plan only on pay-per-view. It's maximum college football with over 100 extra games you can't see anywhere else. Catch all the top conferences. To be there, all you need to do is get ESPN Game Plan only on pay-per-view. To order, call your local cable operator or 1-800-DIRECT-TV or 1-800-333-DISH. They are Saturday soldiers prepared for battle, fighting for every pass, every yard, every touchdown. Catch all this week's college football action with ESPN Game Plan. It's maximum college football with up to 12 games you can't see anywhere else, only on pay-per-view. To be there, all you need to do is get ESPN Game Plan, now available as pay-per-day. To order, call your local cable operator or 1-800-DIRECT-TV or 1-800-333-DISH. The yellow one is Pikachu. He's a Pokemon. Yeah, who is Digimon? Thanks. Digimon is like a different group, wholly separate from the Pokemons. Thanks for clarifying that. Sure.
Actually, Digimon means digital monsters. show presented by Capital One who asks what's in your wallet from Times Square Stadium in New York John Saunders and Terry Bowden and welcome back everyone we told you UCLA lost earlier in the day so obviously the door was wide open for a bunch of teams around the country because you knew either Oklahoma or Nebraska was going to end the day with a loss because of that head-to-head -head matchup in a Lincoln and what a matchup this one turned out to be. Oklahoma had won 20 straight games. Nebraska hadn't lost in 19 straight at home. Nate Hibble in at quarterback. Seven yards to Trent Smith here. And Hibble's in there, started the day as the backup because White got injured. Seven to nothing, the score at that point. But then Nebraska puts together an impressive drive and comes back down and scores. And there's that pass by Hibble for the Trent Smith. Darren Dietrich here bunches this one in. And this man, Bobby Stoops in, can we make it to 21? And then this is the play that looked like it was going to go for a touchdown, but Hibble fell on the play. Now, Nebraska comes back, the identical play in the final quarter, and this one winds up being a touchdown to Crouch, who takes it 63 yards, and that was the difference, that big play. But, Terry, as you watch this game, the real difference was the experience of Eric Crouch. That's right. A young quarterback for Oklahoma falls down when they call him num his number. Eric Crouch makes the catch and runs the touchdown. But the story was about defense. Both defenses played well, but Nebraska's played better. 20-10 to 10 is the final, so Oklahoma loses for the first time in 20 games. Nebraska's now won 20 straight at home. Okay, Virginia Tech. Chance for them to move up, right? This is Syracuse, and Jamal Riddle returns the punt 51 yards for the touchdown. Syracuse takes the lead in this game, and they would never give it up, leading 17-0 at halftime. Grant Noel leads them back, 17 yards to Sean Witten here in the end zone, just over the defender, 20-14 to the score there. But then this safety is Noel gets tackled in the end zone, and Syracuse wins for the seventh consecutive time after starting the season 0-2 and, and Virginia Tech their first loss of the year. Virginia Tech had not played anybody, and they usually win the specialty teams and run the ball. They had a punt return for a touchdown today against them, and they did not rush as a team for even 100 yards. Here's a look at the Bowl Championship Series standings in the top five. Now, people down in Coral Gables, Miami, you're going to send me letters on this one, but look how far back Miami is right now of Oklahoma. Because of the loss, you only add one more point onto Oklahoma. And because Virginia Tech and UCLA lost, Oklahoma's likely not going to slide that far in the polls. I'm predicting that on Monday, Oklahoma with one loss is still going to be ahead of Miami in the BCS. John, John, they very well may be, but if I'm Larry Coker at Miami and I'm his players, I don't pay attention. I don't listen. All I want to do is be undefeated. So if I'm the only undefeated team, I've got to gripe if I don't play for the championship. All those computer polls out there, it's the Saunders computer that I'm following in this one. Maryland facing Florida State. Florida State with a couple of losses. Maryland had yet to be beaten here, but Bruce Perry here from eight yards out, and Maryland regains the lead. They scored the first two touchdowns of this game, but Florida State late was too much. Chris Ricks, 28 yards to Tallman Gardner, and that broke open a 31-all tie, and then Ricks again, 22 yards to Javon Walker, and Florida State wins this one going away, 52 to 31. Ricks, 15 of 24, 350 yards and five touchdowns. Well, Florida State usually has the turnovers. Maryland had the turnovers today. They had four. Each one led to a touchdown, 28 points to Florida State. All right, again, the first loss for the Terrapin. Still, Ralph Friesen doing a tremendous job there. Ohio State facing Penn State. Zach Mills, the backup quarterback, forced in to start today. 69 yards in this run, a terrific run against Penn State to within 27 to 15. But Zach Mills was using his arm as well. 26 yards to Tony Johnson. 
Penn State suddenly is only down 27-22, and Joe Paterno says, I might yet get that win to pass the Bear. Zach Mills again, 14 yards to Eric McCoo. Touchdown, and that's it. Penn State on top. Joe Paterno, number one all-time in Division I coaching victory. You know, he had the team. They were down 18 points in the second half. He got this team to come back. He still got it. Now look at where Joe Paw stands right now, and your dad is also on this list. The Bear is in his sights next, but Joe Paterno, 324, one more than the Bear, and Joe Paterno in his 70s says, I'm having too much fun to think about stepping down. And when every once in a while uh, people say to me, you ought to get out of it, you ought to get out of it, and I, you know, I'm like everybody else, and every once in a while I think about it, and then I realize just how much it means to me and how many really absolutely great days I've had. I don't want to get out of it. Yeah, they say you're hanging around young people, you stay young. Your dad's certainly testament to that, and Joe as well. Both of these men are great for the game. I remember as a college football player standing across the sideline and just getting to play against him, and then at Auburn getting to coach against him, he beat me pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move along. South Carolina facing Tennessee, a couple of one-loss teams, and Lou Holtz trying to pull off this victory. If he gets this one, this is a team that could go far. Travis Stevens, though, eight yards in for a touchdown. Tennessee scores first, but South Carolina comes back. Phil Petty, seven yards to Derek Watson. Ties the game at seven apiece. Casey Clawson, though, has led Tennessee back. They've scored again to lead 17-10. These are the two best defenses in the SEC, but Tennessee probably has too many guns on offense for South Carolina to stop. Travis Stevens already over 100 yards. Florida facing Georgia. And Steve Spurrier, well, he doesn't lose very often to Georgia just once. Rex Grossman, 21 yards to Jabbar Gaffney, and Florida had a 10-3 lead. Rex Grossman again, this time he dives in, one yard for the touchdown, and Florida pulls off the win in the world's largest outdoor cocktail party, 24-10. And they had four turnovers. This score could have been a lot worse. Florida's just now starting to play like it was earlier in the season. Look at the numbers on Grossman. Yes, he was picked off twice, but 27 of 35, for 407 yards, he's passed for at least 300 yards in every single game he's played this year. Still very much in the hunt for the Heisman Trophy. Stick around. We'll continue with more of the Capital One Halftime Show in a moment. Right now, Washington State and Oregon in a tight battle. Saturday mornings at 10.30 on ESPN. Look at me, I'm a footballer. I feel so pretty inside. Ah, Kirk, look, it's you and me. I have to go. I have to go, I'm sorry. It's you and me, Kirk. I'm a football like I did. Kirk! Presented by Discover Card. Saturday mornings at 10.30 on ESPN. Can happen to the best of us. This time it happened to Rich. Keep in touch. He ended up getting sent down. And now for sports. Thank you, Courtney. All JV wrestlers must return their uniforms to coach. He was a real asset down there. His maturity, his experience. Miss Jason, could you buy some beer? Okay, when I go like this, that's your cue. No. Please? No. Come on. No. Do you even go to the school? Because you're not supposed to be on the show unless you go to this school. But we're glad he worked his way back to the show. And I'm sure he is, too. So, let's see some James K. Polk spirit. Welcome back once again to Times Square and the Capital One Halftime Show. John Saunders here alongside of Terry Bowden. You had to feel with UCLA, Virginia Tech, and Oklahoma all losing today, the one-loss teams all started chomping at the bit saying, we are right back in the national championship hunt. One of those teams, Texas, and of course their only loss was to Oklahoma. Chris Sims struggled in that game. He has not struggled since. No, he's thrown 12 touchdown passes since that loss to Oklahoma. Baylor, Kansas, Texas, A&M is all they've got left. He had four touchdown passes today. Now, you speak of Texas A&M, they were facing Iowa State today. Derek Farmer takes off 65 yards. He had 17 carries for 133 yards. I tell you, they still run the ball well. Their defense is helping him. They've kind of stumbled into this one-loss season because they're not a very dominant team, but they keep on winning. Winning this one by three. Now, over in the SEC, Auburn 
the last remaining unbeaten team in SEC play facing Arkansas and Arkansas hands it to a Matt Jones 21 yard to Richard Smith second straight week they give up 40 plus devastating loss here the defense has not come to play they've been living on the edge won a lot of close ball games this year in the ACC your brother Tommy Clemson against Wake Forest and they put it in the hands of Woody Danzler, usually a good idea. He rushes for over 100, passes for over 200, but it was the defense that came through today. That's what they needed. Yeah, the defense had not been playing very well. Of course, they play father, your brother, Tommy, against your dad, Bobby. That happens next week. You'll see that here on ABC. Now, in the Big Ten, Michigan was the last team in conference play without a loss. Today, facing Iowa, it would be hard-pressed to keep that streak going. John Navarro goes six yards here to Marquise Walker. You want to see a great grab? How about that one? Great catch. That's why he's one of the best receivers in the country. But John Navarre, although he had a couple of touchdown passes, a couple of interceptions too. This one, though, into Sean Thompson. Two-point conversion was good. They win it 32 to 26 the final. Northwestern against Purdue. And the Boilermakers moving up and banging the drum loudly and with authority. Brandon Hance. The replacement for Drew Brees looked like Brees here hitting Seth Morales. Well, I'll tell you why the passing was so good, because they ran the ball again. Montreal Lowe is the first back this year at Purdue to rush for 100 yards. Brandon Hance, nine carries for 49 yards and 14 of 31 only for 190 yards, but the victory. This is the Capital One Halftime Show from New York. Una nueva era en televisión deportiva está aquí. ESPN Deportes. Ahora ESPN es en español. Los domingos por la noche no se pierda Major League Baseball. Y muy pronto la NFL y boxeo. Los domingos por la noche. Cada palabra en español. Toda la acción de los deportes se encuentra en ESPN. Presentado por quienes mejor lo hacen. ESPN Deportes. Los domingos a las 7 y media. You know, athletes are pretty well known for their superstitions, but I gotta be honest, our guys can be pretty quirky too. I would show, Ken. You too. There's this one time Brian had a great show, didn't bathe for 17 days straight. Whereas this year, though, it's been a very different story. The worst had to be when Dan spilled clam chowder, Manhattan clam chowder, all over Reese. Had his best show ever. Of course, that got old for Reese really quickly. Yeah. He's in makeup. Next Saturday on ABC 1230 Pacific, you'll have a chance to see a couple of teams capable of doing some damage, although they both struggled this year. Oregon State taking on USC. And then Notre Dame and Boston College today. William Green, 71 yards on this touchdown run to tie the game at seven apiece. Boston College always has the running game going this year. Notre Dame tough place to go into to face Boston College. You know they get a loss there a few years back. Well, this is smash mouth football. Both of these teams must be able to run the ball. Whoever does in the second half will win the game. Oregon and Washington State. Washington State's offense has been great all year, but not in the first half. No, though, 31 points they've had in the first half every game for Washington State. Oregon's done a great job of stopping them, but both these quarterbacks, they're so good, I think the offenses will be heard from in the second half. Well, let me ask you quickly. Yeah. As a coach, you saw UCLA loss. That big door is open up. Do you get a little tighter or do you feel a little more relaxed? No, I think you're more Excited. If you're Washington State and you just saw or heard that UCLA lost, I think you're excited. You come out there playing. We're going to be the best team in the Pac-10 if we win tonight. All right. Second half is coming up. Oregon, Washington State. Let's rejoin Mike Tirico. 
And John and Terry, everybody I spoke to on the field pregame was asking, what's the UCLA score? They're all thinking about it. Four-point game here in the Pac-10 as we listen to the Washington State band. We remind you that the second half kickoff comes your way after this message. And a word from your ABC station. As an anchor, you always want that complete show. And coming up, a did you know about sports? So, Ken, how are you feeling? I'm fine. Never better. I'm, I'm great. I can go. Just let me finish like that. You get him next show. Sometimes you don't have your best stuff, so you got to bring in a closer. We usually handle it like professionals. Thanks a lot. It's all part of the game. You're on. Please. Two. Welcome back to Sports Center. The subject. Pick me out a winner, Bobby. Okay. Baseball tonight, every night at 10 and midnight on ESPN. One of the four remaining unbeatens, Washington State in trouble, down four at home as we get ready for the third quarter. Mike Tirico, David Norrie with you here in Pullman for both teams. Lowest scoring half of the season. A little bit of a surprise. Why do you think it was so low scoring, and what do you forecast here for the second half? Well, I think all the teams losing in the top ten earlier today, the importance of this game with Washington being one of the only four undefeateds left in the country combined with the weather has produced a situation here where running game is going to be important, defense, special teams. It's really going to turn into a field position game, I think, here in the second half. It might favor Oregon as you look at these two teams. Here's what happened in the first half. Jason Gesser, the Washington State quarterback, his last play of the first quarter had the wind knocked out of him, was down for a few minutes on this scramble. So the backup quarterback, Matt Kegel, came in, and he caught the pass from Colin Henderson. It covered 63 yards, led to a field goal, Washington State's only score of the half. Oregon comes back on the ensuing drive, an 80-yard drive, mostly on the ground with Ontario Smith, who had 56 yards, including that touchdown. And that's how we've arrived at 7-3. Very low scoring for two high-scoring teams. Washington State averages 44 per game, leading the country, leading the Pac-10 third in the country. Oregon averages 39 a game, fourth in the conference, tenth in the country. And you see the quarterbacks only completed six balls in that first half, David. Yeah, not great numbers, but you look at the first half again with the rain coming down, getting steadily worse. I think the quarterbacks did a good job of taking care of the football. No turnovers in the first half by either team. A pretty cleanly played ball game. Our Morgan Stanley well-connected storyline with those quarterbacks. Ontario Smith takes it out to the 21. A marker's down on this kickoff return to start the second half. Uh, let's see what the Ducks have done offensively. Their big three have been Harrington, Maurice Morris on every drive but the touchdown drive. He's approaching 100 yards. And Sammy Parker, essentially the third receiver in terms of production, has been the top one tonight. Well, if you asked head coach Mike Bellotti, what would he take? A big night from Harrington. Holding on the return team during the return. 10-yard penalty spot of the foul. First down. If you asked coach... Mike Bellotti, if he'd take a big game from Joey Harrington or a big game from Maurice Morris, I think he'd take it from Morris. And 92 yards on the ground in the first half. That's really given Oregon the upper hand in this football game thus far. So they're going to be backed up with a long field to go. And that's right over by the student section. And, uh, they have been loud. They were here right when the gates opened. Again, to reiterate what Mike Price said in his time here at Washington State, and probably the history of this stadium, as big a non-Washington game, non-Apple Cup, as they've had. First play of the half is Morris running to the right. Nice block down the sideline. Flag comes in as Morris is pushed out of bounds at the 46. Oh, he had the corner, but perhaps he had help getting there. It'll dent some of a 36-yard carry. Three penalties on Oregon in that first half. I should say two, and two here on the first two plays of the third quarter. Mm, tough one. 
And Morris had the corner. And the penalty came outside. Big number 75. Corey Chambers, a right tackle at it, both hands. Full of jersey. And a good call, a nice catch by this officiating crew. And Harrington's going to be operating in the shadow of his own goalpost. Jim Stricker, the official's mic was not working. Mike Bellotti is going to get an explanation here. Uh, the ball is still at the 11. It still says first down on the down marker. So perhaps there was a second flag. This officer now it will be walked off. Okay. Administration of the penalty was delayed. It is half the distance to the goal. And we'll have first and oh, 16 coming up. Washington State's quarterbacks have been hit a lot, but Joey Harrington has been knocked down and banged around as well. Morris up the middle to the nine. That's Lamont Thompson, the free safety, walked way up there on run support. Is that, and as an offensive coordinator, you've got to be cognizant of the weather conditions. And a very strong wind at the Oregon. Offense is back right now. Temperature dropping. I think the wind chill might be getting down into the definitely into the 30s, maybe the 20s before this game is over. Oh, it's so. not that bad. Come on. You are Southern California, man. The, the weather, we hear the weather <laughs> channel ringing into the booth. I tell you what, it feels like it up here, and that ball gets hard, and the play calling. And Jeff Tedford's going to have to be a little bit more conservative with this play call. Second and 11. They shot the gap on Morris. Lost four. Eric Coleman cleaned it up. James Price, number five on the back as play calling gets more predictable and more conservative you can get more defenders up near the line of scrimmage and start playing the run in Washington State a nice job of rallying defenders five Washington State defensive players rolling up on Maurice Morris Coleman finished it Al Genitone got the initial penetration for the middle linebacker spot Morris out Ontario Smith in loud for third and 15. They run Smith makes three men miss and the fourth and he has the first down spectacular run by the sophomore from Sacramento. That is major league stuff. There were no question marks about the talent of number two Ontario Smith. He had to sit out a year coming from Tennessee, but he played quite a bit as a true freshman down in Knoxville. Decided to come out to the West Coast, and you get no drop-off when you go with Ontario Smith subbing in for Maurice Morris. Oh, what moves. That was all number two. First and ten for the Ducks. Harrington throws to Willis. Jason Willis, five to the 30, second and five ahead. Now that's a, a great weapon to have in your arsenal. To just have the wide receiver raise up and Harrington with his arm strength flash it outside, get into the hands of a speedy wide receiver. Those of you just tuning in, the dinner hour here on the West Coast, Washington State, big story nationally. Not just the shocking undefeated start to the season, but the very thin company at the top of the list. Four teams in the nation left undefeated. But Oregon wants to knock off Washington State and make it a free-for-all of the one-loss teams. It's the yard there for Smith. Second and nine coming up. We've talked about Washington State. Here are the eight unbeatens to start the day. Miami won on Thursday night, blowing out West Virginia. Oklahoma lost. Virginia Tech lost to Syracuse. UCLA lost here in the league to Stanford. BYU at San Diego State, kicking in the next five minutes. Maryland's lost to Florida State. So it's only Miami, Nebraska, BYU, and Washington State. Two expected, two shockers. But Joey Harrington and the Ducks might have a lot to say about that. Third and five against the Heat. First down pass to Parker, depending on the mark. 
comes the back official in to help with the spot. And it will be a first down. The line judge was right on it, and I think this is a good spot. Well, early in the game, Oregon got a beneficial spot over on the Washington State sideline. And this time it looks like he did have the depth to pick up the first down. We were talking about that as we were watching the prior game in our triple header on ABC. The forward progress has really been very beneficial to the offense. If you try to spin around and gain yardage and you get to the 40, they give you those five. But if you're trying to do that and you get stopped, they give you forward progress. That's not an exact science, and it's never objective. It's a very subjective thing when the side judge, a field judge, is marking that forward progress. The way it's being called the last few years, that was a good call. Ontario Smith has room to run. Spinning across the 45. Knocked down at the 47. Nawe made the play along with Lamont Thompson. But Ontario Smith, every time he touches the ball, is getting 8, 10, 11 yards. He has a, a very high ability level. One of the most, certainly the most talented running backs on the West Coast. And... You know, Mike Bellotti, his offensive coordinator, Jeff Tedford, if they sense that one of these two backs is getting on rhythm and really having a big game, they won't be afraid to go with an Ontario Smith or a Maurice Morris if either one gets real hot. New left tackle in the game, Adam Snyder in for Adams. Harrington throws. It's complete to Jason Willis. It's another first down right in front of Jason David in the corner. But a good drive from way back in its own 10 this Oregon drive started and remember a couple of flags on this opening possession of the third quarter heck of a route by Willis on the comeback out and how about the throw by Harrington it was played well by Jason David as we look at that drive summary nine plays 50 yards and the Chrysler drive summary this play will take it over the first five minutes of the quarter Oregon looking to add to a four-point lead. The tight end, Reister, has it at the 41, stood up there, and he can't get back to the original line of scrimmage. Billy Newman holding on for dear life. <laughs> Newman at 200 pounds, but Reister at 245. Just, Come on down here, big fella. <laughs> well, he talked about play calling and the weather affecting Jeff Tedford's calls. A little bit more conservative in your own end and now as the ducks cross midfield more comfortable with to go with passing with joey harrington working from the pocket reister not able to get free 10 of 19 for harrington a couple of runs for 21 yards washington state brings the heat smith is free ontario smith touchdown And he jumps to the Duck faithful who've come from Eugene. A flag goes down after that celebration. He did the green and gold thing like the Packers trying to jump into the end zone. Doing the uh, Palouse pull up instead of the Lambeau leap to the Oregon faithful in this uh, bad weather. But it's going to cost him 15. Wrong stadium. <laughs> But what a run by Smith as they were bringing the heat. Ontario, you're supposed to do that down at Otson. But what a burst of speed. And if you don't hit Ontario Smith low and you let him get up ahead of steam as a running back, he's going to be awfully tough to find in the secondary. We saw it a week ago, Mike. We talked about it at the top. The kickoff return at Stanford. Looked like he got shot out of a cannon. He has the power and the speed. Now a 35-yard extra point for Jared Siegel. Wind at his back, essentially over his left shoulder. Jared Siegel is a kicker. And it's good. 10 plays, 89 yards. Ontario Smith takes it to the house. Discover Card, Saturday mornings at 10.30 on ESPN.
<laughs> He's a field goal kicker. What's so amazing about a field goal? It's 63 yards under pressure. Under pressure? Pressure. I never said more than five words to a field goal kicker in my life. Like, go get me some water. And hurry. <laughs> Guys, look, I got $40. Says none of y'all can hit from half that distance. You got it. I'll take that. It's a bet. <laughs> Guys. Oh, I believe you're up. <laughs> Pretty far. <laughs> got to have fun. A little bit of celebrating does not bother the me. The game itself is fun. The game, these are great athletes playing the game of football. That's a celebration. That's fun. That's because you ain't got no rhythm, man. <laughs> it's about individuality, Chris. It's you, called you, professional you football. Act like a professional. I'm right? talking about professional and organized and disciplined. <laughs> They're kids. Let the kids have some fun. Well, I'll show you some fun. Oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> I no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> What a drive to open the half. Ten plays, 89 yards, over 546 of this third quarter. Oregon now has 243 rushing yards, and that's against the top rush defense in the Pac-10. And the total yardage difference now 193 for the road team. Ontario Smith sitting alongside Maurice Morris, and Oregon starting to pile up a pretty significant time of possession advantage it means a lot Mike when you can go with fresh legs especially the kind of backs that you have to go to with Ontario Smith and Maurice Morris and it's 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 meaning the difference here and the Ducks are starting to take this game over on the ground kick off by Jared Siegel with the win will be a touchback send you to New York Times Square Stadium John Saunders Mike here for the Burger King update. Notre Dame facing Boston College tied at seven apiece. Carlisle Holiday just five yards to John Owens. Nice pitch there but wide open in the end zone. The hit comes way too late. And Notre Dame takes the lead at 14 to seven. Also one that's a final now. South Carolina with their second loss now in the conference as Tennessee goes to four and one in the SEC. Mike. Yeah, same as it ever was Tennessee and Florida leading the SEC East. Thanks John. Minnick the first down carry for about three yards. John and Terry put in a very long day on this uh, triple header Saturday, but uh, it's been three wonderful games starting in Lincoln and then on the farm with Stanford getting the victory there and perhaps the fifth of the eight unbeatens starting this weekend could go down here. Washington State's in trouble down 11. Yeah, Cougars are in trouble and Mike you mentioned it in the break. This is a big drive for Washington State. Gesser not getting much help from the run game. Defenders numbers. He's going to have to get it done with the pass. He nearly lost the ball and they're going to rule that he had a knee on the ground when he picked it back up. It's going to be a loss of a few yards and third and about nine. Well, Oregon's getting the linebackers involved up on the line of scrimmage and they're going with one more defender then the Washington State team has number of blockers. And taking a look at the last play, just an exchange problem. Ooh, and and a hit. right knee looked like it might not have touched the turf there. Nope. Nope, never touched. Mm. So it becomes third and nine. Mike Bush, 30 catches this year, averages 20 per catch, nothing in this game. Gesser finally has time to Bush and he fell down. So they finally try to go to the basketball star at 6'6". He's been a difference maker for this team this year. Fell down. Now Mike Price told us yesterday, he said, if teams take away the run against the spread offense, if you can't hit balls in the passing game, then the spread offense isn't worth much. And Jason Gesser... And he's facing an 11-point deficit here. He's going to have to make the plays if Washington State is going to come back. Into the wind kick for Cox. Averaged 43 on his five first-half kicks. Harry waits. Great kick again. That's 46 yards. Keenan from the 32. Picked up a couple of bumps and blocks. And got across the 40. And the marker comes in. Reserve. Uh, 
linebacker, or actually starting linebacker, Al Genitone, made the tackle. I think Gary McGraw, the backup safety, got hit with the flag. So from the spot, it'll be an Oregon drive start inside its own 30. But the Ducks lead by 11, and they have the ball halfway through the third. This room. Nice. And we're back. Alabama. College Game Day, presented by Discover Card. Saturday mornings at 10:30 on ESPN. <laughs> He's a field goal kicker. What's so amazing about a field goal? It's 63 yards under pressure. Under pressure? pressure. I never said more than five words to a field goal kicker in my life. Like, go get me some water. And hurry. <laughs> Guys, look, I got $40. Says none of y'all can hit from half that distance. You got it. I'll take that. It's a bet. <laughs> Guys. Oh, believe you're up. <laughs> Pretty far. <laughs> Look at me, I'm a football like this. So ah! Herc, look, it's you and me. I have to go. I have to go, I'm sorry. It's you and me, Kirk. I'm a football like I did. Kirk! Oh, look at me, I'm a football like I did. We're back. College Game Day, presented by Discover Card. Saturday mornings at 10.30 on ESPN. On this perfect night in Pullman, ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chrysler. Drive equals love. Pacific Life Annuities Insurance Investments. Discover the power of Pacific Life. Nokia. Personalize your phone, your life, your world. Nokia. Connecting people. And Burger King. Home of the Whopper. We're at the home of the Cougs, the Palouse, here in Pullman, Washington. And any trip to Pullman for a game when the sun's down should be like this. Cold, raw, wet, nasty. And Oregon up 11 and running the ball like you need to in this weather. Maurice Morris to the 44. And they are just absolutely flattening Washington State in the ground game. 17 there. Yeah, it's just a matter of Oregon lining up and saying, we are going to run the football. Can you stop us? And Washington State looks like they're getting run down up front. And they're averaging over eight yards per carry. You see the 261 rush yards. It comes on 31 carries over their season average. And the passing game has been a non-factor. Why not when you can run it against a good run defense? Best in the league statistically. First down throw. Once again, it is Sammy Parker to the 46. Sammy's sixth catch of the night. Won't gain anything. Eric Coleman, the corner. The egg. Two backs now over 100 yards. The last carry took Mars to 111. And Ontario Smith has come in on the two scoring drives. 11 carries, David, 129 yards. Now Maurice Morris got this running game off to a quick start and then a heavy dose of Ontario Smith. He's got the power to run between the tackles and the speed to take it the distance. And a 7-3 game turned into a 14-3 game in a hurry on that last run. It allows Joey Harrington to go with the more conservative passes as well when he wants to put it up. Changed the cadence. Washington State got back and nearly got an interception. Pass intended for Howery. And right there was Jason David, the sophomore from Covina, California. Now that was a hitch route, and that's supposed to be a conservative pass play. But David, with a break on the football, turns it into a dangerous throw. And that's a nice job by Howery. Great play by David on the break, but a nice play by Howery to keep his body in between the defender and the football. And that's one of those be carefuls, because if you start jumping on those a little bit, you got a pump and a quick six behind you. Well, you hear all the time that Howery's got a great feel for the football game, and I think he felt that defender coming from behind. Empty the backfield, even though there's a running back and tight end in the game. They blitz off the corner. The quick pass to Parker. Gains nothing. Nate Mallory, the defensive tackle, big three and out for the Wazoo defense. Oregon had the right play call for the blitz there, but that's the problem with the wide receiver screen. Even if you get the proper play call into a blitz, sometimes things get a little crowded in the middle. 
Oregon's going to have to punt the ball away. Maybe a time to put some pressure on Jesse Arroyo, the punter. He is kicking with the wind. Oregon's been impeccable on protection tonight after the two blocks last week. Well done again. Coleman fields at the 12. It's as much as he can up the middle on a very nice return to the 26 yard line. Another big drive for Washington State. We're already down to 523 left. Third quarter. Monday Night Football, they brought in Dennis Miller, so we decided to give our show a little shot in the arm. So while Serena sits at home with an injury, Venus Williams is advancing the finals. Yeah! NCAA basketball, big dance. And you always have to try new things. You always got to tinker with it, make it better. The Bulls basketball look. Uh, why? Why are we so bad? You know what? It's a very subjective thing. Next Sports Center, one hour from now with Carrot Top. I'm Carl Ravitch. Thanks for watching, folks. Woo! Smart! Put yourself in the hot seat of ESPN's two-minute drill. Feel your heart pump and your adrenaline build as you race the clock. Now you can be in the hot seat at home. ESPN's two-minute drill, the ultimate sports quiz show, comes to the PC with ESPN's two-minute drill CD-ROM. Test your sports knowledge with host Kenny May and other ESPN personalities, such as Rich Eisen, Tom Jackson, and Charlie Steiner. ESPN's two-minute drill CD-ROM. Available wherever software is sold. It's college football season, and that means classic Friday tailgate, only on ESPN Classic. Every Friday from 1 to 7, witness the greatest game. Touchdown! The snake does it again! The greatest players and the greatest rivalries in college football history. It's the classic Friday tailgate, every Friday from 1 to 7, only on ESPN Classic. Just a few of the 21,500 students. A couple thousand grad students on this uh, beautiful, sprawling 600-acre campus here in eastern Washington. Just a couple of miles from the Idaho border. First and 10, Gesser runs with Minnick. And the former Marine, Dave Minnick, gains only a yard. Second and nine coming up. We saw USC is having a good afternoon. Uh, Oregon State USC. Will be the game that you see at 12.30 Pacific time here on ABC out here on the coast. Florida State Clemson for the pay-per-view audience. We have three one-loss teams in the ACC. And the other game available will be Michigan, Michigan State. The Wolverines in the same boat as Oregon. You know, David, I was up this morning, 9 o'clock out here, and our spotter Joe Gowan and I went to watch the Nebraska-Oklahoma game. And Oregon fans saw Virginia Tech was losing to Syracuse, and they were rooting. They fully understand, get all these teams with one loss, and it's a big party now. It's a mess. And Oregon's trying to do its part here tonight. Second and nine. Gesser needs to hit one. Flushed from the pocket, but nothing open. Absolutely nothing. He's got two receivers 30 yards away. Nobody coming back to him. It's not his fault. Now, Washington State's going to have to start throwing the ball in obvious run situations. And, and second and long is not an obvious run situation. The first down play calls are going to have to start tilting to the pass game because Oregon's had such great success throughout this game, bringing linebackers, bringing the, the cornerbacks on blitzes. Gesser needs some extra time, and a great way to get extra time is to throw on running downs. Pass down here, three and nine, needing to get to the 37. They bring the heat, Gesser throws. It's complete for a first down at the 40. Jerome Riley. Catch three on the night for the junior. Well, this is a, a big time throw and Washington State needed it. And, and a good route on the outside by jo Jerome Riley. Rashad Bowman, if he doesn't make that tackle, that's about as good a play as you can make at the cornerback position when you miss. The right hand trying to get the deflection and then he made the tackle, made sure with the left hand, Riley could have been gone. Out of the gum, the backfield is empty. They rush four. Nobody's open. Guess who try to make something happen? Just gets back to the line of scrimmage. 
So we'll have second and ten coming up. It's been very quiet for the two top pass catchers. We spoke of Bush on the last incompletion. McElrath has also been held in check. He's 112 yards a game and seven catches per game, best in the league. Bush, seventh in the league in uh, his yards per game. Well, Bush is, is very young in a, in a football sense, a leading scorer and rebounder for the Washington State basketball team. And the Cougars are going up against one of the top two or three cornerback tandems in the country tonight. Bauman and Smith have been very good. Gets her big ball for Bush. He got it and then couldn't hang on. Keith Lewis did a great job. Bush had his hands on it, and Lewis just yanked his arm out of the way. Well, Gesser needed a play from Mike Bush, and you were right on it, Mike. That's a beautiful play by Lewis getting back. Now, Lewis was a really the only player on this Oregon squad as a true freshman that got quality playing time a year ago, and they got such great play from him in special teams, they figured, we got to get this guy on the field to play, and, and that may end up being one of the key plays of this ballgame. Lewis didn't play last week, sprained left ankle. Great to have him back for the Ducks here. Third and ten. Guess whose pass is broken up by Steve Smith. So it's Smith and Bowman and Lewis and Rasuli Webster. This Oregon secondary answering the call tonight. Yeah, not a great route by Bush. And Bush doesn't come back for the ball very well, taking the angle away from the defensive back. Steve Smith. Smith with a little cleaner break on that football, and he may have been gone the other way. Some of what you were just alluding to, the raw ability, but not the polish of an experienced wide receiver. It takes time to learn how to run pass routes, and oftentimes years. Dylan Cox's kick was not his best of the night and starts rolling back the other way. And is finally down to the 37-yard line. The uh, worst punt of the evening for Cox, just 24 yards. So finally, in the wind, not able to get the job done. Short field here. Shorter field, I should say. For Oregon. Where's the Pacific Life game summary? 261 rush yards against the top rush defense in the conference. Harrington, quiet. Gesser, quieter. Well below his conference best per game mark. It's been the run game with Ontario Smith and Maurice Mars. But a whole lot of crimson and gray coming at number two, led by Al Genitone, the middle backer. Well, the success of the running game for Oregon has translated into a 14-3 lead. And when you have an 11-point lead with this kind of weather late in the third quarter, Oregon doesn't have to put the ball in the air. And that's a huge advantage. Washington State's going to have to continue to make plays in the passing game or try to get that passing game going. And you risk turnovers when you put the ball up in the rain. So Oregon really sitting on top here late in the third quarter. Second and ten. Harrington on the pump and go for Harry. He brought it in. Still going and down at the 35. Pickup of 27 yards. Keenan Howry, a good adjust, and Joey says, way to go, 1-5. Well, Joey Harrington does a super job on the fade route here. He's going to get a pump fake from Howry, sets up the defender, and then the ball's delivered to the outside. Beating Coleman. Coleman, pretty good coverage, but that's a pretty tough throw to defend when Harrington lays the ball out accurately toward the sideline. Howry's first grab of the game. Harrington back to the air on first down. Going for Howry in a quick six. Incomplete. Well, that was almost the perfect spot. Genitone was putting the heat on Harrington. Maybe he had to give it up quick. Almost had that layout Keenan Howry vintage catch. Yeah, and if Genitone doesn't arrive this quickly, this is a touchdown. If Harrington has time in the pocket, he doesn't miss these balls. Hmm. Post route to Howry down the middle, Genitone on the blitz, and Howry about a half step from bringing that ball in. Oh, 
Nice inside hand up. Big opening. Morris. Oh, he hurt himself. May have pulled a hamstring as he comes down at the nine yard line. You can see Maurice Morris was kicking it into another gear and started to grab for that left hamstring. Maybe he cramped. You're not sure. But he is injured. If you're an Oregon fan, you hope it was a cramp. It looks that way. And I'm not sure Maurice Morris knows whether it's a pulled ham or a cramp. Can you get that hammy? And you could see it very clearly there. He may have scored on that play. What a night for Maurice Morris. What a night for this offensive line. And his counterpart in the backfield for Oregon, Ontario Smith, having the same type of success. Oregon looking to try to run away and hide here late in the third quarter. Definitely looks like a cramp. That's good news for Oregon. First and goal. Harrington keeping. He's just going to slide down at the six. Mike Bellotti looked uh, very unhappy. He was uh, disconcerted there at the uh, snap. And uh, probably glad to see Harrington just get out of there without a negative play. Well, that's what's so great about having a quarterback like Joey Harrington, the seasoning that he has. Became the starter in his sophomore year and a broken play in the backfield. He can get it done with his feet as you see there's 17 career touchdowns, but he turned a negative play into a positive game. And, and that's one of the special aspects of a Joey Harrington. On second and goal, Ontario Smith reads the blocks, powers forward. No signal. He's right at the goal line. Just looks to be short. It's going to be third and inches for a touchdown when this fourth quarter gets started. Tremendous power by Ontario Smith, and I think they're going to let the clock run out, but Smith carrying two or three defenders almost scored on that play. Just one first down for Washington State. They only had the ball for four minutes. Oregon leads 14-3. They're knocking on touchdown's door. And ABC Sports presentation of college football is going to continue after this message and a word from your ABC station. Every Wednesday night from 9 to 11 is Wednesday Night College Football. It's Game of the Night only on ESPN Classic. Classic rivalries. Touchdown! Classic legend. Classic bowl. The snake does it again. <laughs> Touchdown, Nebraska! The only place to be for the greatest games in college football is ESPN Classic. Wednesday Night College Football. Every Wednesday night from 9 to 11. Hey, Boilermaker. Yeah? Got my curve breaking two and a half feet. Oh, yeah? Then you have been practicing. Huh? But don't give me no baloney about a curve breaking two and a half feet, though. For how much? Ten bucks. Make it twenty. We got a bet. Baseball tonight. Every night at 10 and midnight on ESPN. A great slugger we haven't got. A great pitcher we haven't got. A great ball club we haven't got. What have we got? We've got heart. All you really need is heart. When the odds are saying you'll never win, that's when the grin should start. Now you're getting the idea. Baseball tonight, every night at 10 and midnight on ESPN. I'm Dan Patrick here in the ESPN Radio Chopper. Radio marketing is all about promotions. That's why we're blanketing the country with these ESPN radio bats. We've got live sporting events. We've got call-in shows. You can log on to ESPNRadio.com and find out more about stations in your area. Or you can listen online. So tune in. And if you happen to catch one of these bats, enjoy! Washington, Mike Tirico, David Nori. Jason Gesser can only sit and watch. He hasn't had many chances. Oregon has it six inches away from continuing this second half domination 
and going up 18. Harrington, Ontario Smith, not even touched until he's in, but a marker's down. A marker's down from the sideline against Oregon. And you see Oregon completely dominated that uh, third quarter. Washington State only nine plays for 14 yards. Yeah, that is utter domination, but is there anything more frustrating for a head coach? Third and inches on the goal line and an illegal procedure call. Bilotti's thinking with this weather, I'm getting ready to put this game away. Not the time you want a five-yarder, and it changes the play calling dynamics quite a bit here. Washington State has the wind in this fourth quarter, but this is such a key play for Mike Price's defense. If they can maintain Oregon here, minimize the damage to a field goal, it's a two-touchdown game. Otherwise, the lead will be 18 and three scores. Harrington runs. It is nothing there for Smith. A pretty big play. James Price, the linebacker, I believe, is the man who's uh, shaken up. Number five grabbed for that leg right away. Now this one might be a knee and Price coming up and run support breaks down. Now that left that left foot gives away and he reaches for the right knee immediately. Well as they uh, check out the senior from Anchorage fourth leading tackler on this team it's fourth down and we'll take a break. You gotta have fun. A little bit of celebrating does not bother the me. The game itself is fun. The game, these are great athletes playing the game of football. That's a celebration. That's fun. That's because you ain't got no rhythm, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's about individuality, Chris. It's you, called you, professional you football. Act like a professional. Stop talking about professional and organized and disciplined. <laughs> They're kids. Let the kids have some fun. fun. I'll show you some fun. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> I no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Sports Center is, is live four times a day, but that doesn't mean the other seven broadcasts are straight repeats. Yeah, well, here, look, in this live show, Brian Kenny has his pen in his right hand, but in the rebroadcast, I put the pen in his different hand. And here, then, Linda Cohn is presenting with John Anderson, but in the rebroadcast, I replaced John with El Macho Baracho, the winningest cockfighter in all of Mexico. It's all about keeping it fresh. That's what I do. The games will come to an end this weekend, but that doesn't mean you have to leave the worldwide leader in sports at home. Because the news, interviews, and analysis from your favorite ESPN personalities continues all day, every day, on over 600 radio stations nationwide. Check your local listings to find the ESPN radio station near you. ESPN Radio. Take it with you. We're back live. You see James Price walking off, putting weight on both legs, so perhaps not as serious as the injury looked. It was a third down stop, and now Jared Siegel on for the field goal try. Hasn't attempted one since the Utah State game a month ago. Four of seven on the year. And this one from 22 yards. Out of the Harrington hole, it is perfect. And the freshman Siegel gives Mike Bellotti's team a 14-point lead. So it's 17-3 for this Oregon Duck team. A reminder, tomorrow on ABC Sports, it will be much drier. The water will be frozen as you watch the USA's Michelle Kwan, Sarah Hughes, and Sasha Cohen. I know one of your favorite skaters. Head the field at Smart One, Skate America, 1 Eastern. It's 2.30 out here on the coast tomorrow on ABC. The Buick Challenge Golf and the road to the Tour Championship before that on the network tomorrow. Well, 
Well, they came for a party here at the Palouse tonight. As big a game as Martin Stadium has seen other than the Apple Cups over the years. And the Washington State team, knowing that UCLA has lost, knowing about all the other upsets today, it's all anybody was talking about down on the field about a half hour before the game. The over, as Keith Jackson said when uh, Keith and Timmy and Todd Harris got started in the second of our triple header, Keith said sportscasters for years have been saying Team X controls its own destiny. Well, Washington State really does in the Pac-10, and they got 14 and a half minutes to try to Hold on to the slippery grip that is destiny. From the 14 return for Jason David, the quarterback. 13 yard return. They'll start it at the 28. Well, Jason Gesser has plenty of time. 14 17, down two scores. And that procedure penalty was a big one. Oregon six inches away from scoring and had to settle for the field goal. The guesser's got to start putting the ball up here pretty quickly in the pass game. Try a quick hitter with minute. Takes it out to the 32-yard line. We talked about Minnick, the uh, same route as Mike Anderson, Marines, and Sanjak in the junior college ranks, and why Washington State, well, he has a family. Kristen, his uh, wife, uh, they were sweethearts in high school, and a couple of sons, uh, now out of toddler age, around seven and five, David and Clayton, and uh, he thought that this Pullman area, which is a wonderful family area, would be a better place for kids and for family, and that's why he ended up here, and Washington State is very glad that he has. Yes, sir. Looking up top. McElrath could not bring it down. He's going to come on out, go on the sideline where the linebacker James Price is. Word from the bench area, sprained knee. That's a tough call going for fade balls and, and streaks when you're down 14 points. And Jason Gesser in this offense, they need to hit some balls and move the chains. And if, if they've been guilty of one thing with their passing game here in the second half, it's trying to take too big a chunk on each play. They got to move the chains, hit some of the underneath and intermediate routes, and get a drive going. Third down, they need to get to the 38 for the first down. The pass is complete, despite the blanket almost interference type coverage from Bowman. Henderson comes up with the grab. Uh, Bowman did arrive early, and that should have been a flag. The Bowman came through the receiver, and this is a heck of an effort by Henderson. Sometimes you got to be physical, and, and <laughs> Bowman also had a handful of jersey there. He, he not only held him, but he arrived early. Could have been called defensive holding or pass interference. You can have the flag of your choice. I love her shot, Bowman. 5'8". He's shorter than most, but he goes after it. Makes up for it in intensity. Quick hitter with Minnick. That's a good game. Out to the 48. Second and two coming up, and what David alluded to earlier. You got to run on pass downs, pass on rundowns. Second and two is the kind of play calling offensive coordinators love. Well, it gives you the option to go both ways and maybe even hit a home run. But Minnick, if he can get the run game going some, that's going to mean a lot in the pass game. Gesser's been getting a lot of company in the pocket, the linebackers and the, and the blitzes that have been going on, and he needs some of the pressure taken off if he's going to lead this team back. Pressure picked up, pass is incomplete. The heat was on, the timing was not there, and Bush perhaps was not in the right spot for the pressure. At the end of this game, our elite panel will choose the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Chevy players of the game coming up. And the third and two call coming up, Mike. And Mike Price is probably thinking right now about what he's going to do on fourth down. And and they may want to go for it if they don't pick it up on this down. Try to run and get it. Minnick got it and more. First down. And much more. Doesn't have the speed to break it all the way. But took it down to the 15. Oh. 
A minute finds a crease, and there have not been many creases tonight for the run game for Washington State. That's Wesley Mallard, number 18. He's a linebacker, and he's on the 4 by 100 meter team, track team for Oregon. It took a linebacker with sprinter speed to run Minnick down, or this game would have been cut to a one touchdown lead. 38 yards on that run. John Tiffins coming comes in for Minnick. It's first and ten. Can Wazoo get a touch? Yes, sir. Incomplete. There's the flag on Bowman. McElrath was trying to get free. Again, there's seven inches of height difference there. Now Bowman plays such an aggressive style, and he's going to be playing on Sundays. Make no mistake about it. Only goes about 5'9", maybe 5'10", tops. But he is always playing physically, and he has to because of his size differential. The post route and that right arm in early. Gesser was playing back judge. Give me some flag. There it goes. <laughs> that right arm of Bowman's was around McElrath's waist and pretty easy for the back judge to pick up. The full 15-yard walk-off takes it down to the two. So it's first and goal, and Minnick is back in there for Wazoo. Minnick, quick hitter. The ball came free. It's picked up by McElrath, and let's see what they call. He'll be down shy of the goal line. Very attentive from Nicole McElrath, the senior. Well, McElrath's a wide receiver, and they're lining him up at a tight end position. Keep an eye on McElrath. That was a great play to make the recovery, but Washington State might go ahead and motion him out to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup against the small cornerback. And Minnick aggressively over the top. The that helmet, helmet on the Moretti. ball. That was David Moretti, number 44. And McElrath in the right place at the right time. Second and goal. There they go, splitting them out. Maybe we'll use the size advantage. Minnick over the top. And possession crossing the goal line. Touchdown, Wazoo. Point time for Drew Dunning, a field goal earlier. Connects on the PAT. The biggest drive of the season for Washington State. The Marine Minnick leads them, takes them over the top. Settle in, here we go. Seven point game in the Pac 10 with 11.28 to go. Get into the zone, the ESPN zone. The ultimate sports dining and entertainment experience. Eat great food, watch any game that you want, and compete in our sports arena. ESPN Zone, what more do you need? Visit The Zone in Baltimore's Inner Harbor, in downtown Chicago, in New York's Times Square, in Atlanta's Buckhead District, and in downtown Washington, D.C. Get into The Zone. But baseball is mark of time. This field, this game, it's part of our past, Ray, it reminds us of all that once was good, it could be again. Oh, people will come, Ray, people will most definitely come. Baseball tonight, every night at 10 and midnight on ESPN. <laughs> I can still feel his hooks in my ribs and taste the leather from his uppercuts. So why should I get out of the corner? Because I'd gladly take another three minutes of pain for a shot at a title. Wouldn't you? Friday Night Fights on ESPN2. The leading scoring offense in the Pac-10 Number three in the nation was held without a touchdown for the first 
47 and a half minutes here. 48 and a half, actually. But on the touchdown drive, eight plays, 72 yards, just under three minutes. A lot of it, Dave Minnick. It's a one possession game. Ontario Smith, who took one back the distance, waits for Adam Holiday's kickoff. Wind at his back, very strong leg. Bring it out. Smith taken down at the 15 yard line. Well covered as well. Tackle made by Pat Bennett. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, long lasting trucks on the road. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. Swordfish, own it today on video cassette or DVD. And Liberty Mutual, it's more than insurance, it's insurance in action. Oregon going into the rain and wind. I say the rain because it's that annoying, nasty mist coming at the Oregon offense. After Gessler led the touchdown drop. Ontario Smith is the running back for Harrington. Nothing. Isaac Brown, first time we've called a lineman all half. Here's the Pacific Life game summary for those of you just joining us from the Palouse. In the early going during the drive when Kegel plays, the pass from Colin Henderson to the sophomore quarterback. We got it in field goal range. An excellent touchdown drive led by Ontario Smith's powerful eight-yard run. And then Smith had a 41-yard run in the third quarter on Oregon's opening drive, which went 89 yards. But the answer here, Minnick over the top to cap off Washington State's eight-place, 72-yard march. Second and ten, Harrington to the air. Incomplete, and oh, it almost gave Jason David an opportunity for an INT. But now, David Nori, here comes the Wazoo defense. Now, Jason David, you're right, Mike. Had a beat on that ball. He played it perfectly. He was a cornerback on the strong side. And if he doesn't slip, he's got a shot to pick that off. And if you look at the Washington State defense right now, and you look at the body language of the linebackers and the safeties, they're playing run first. And they have to. This Oregon State running game has dominated the second half. Huge third down situation for Washington State. Loud in the Palouse. Smith keeps going. He made more men miss, and he's free. Ontario Smith, an angle on him, and he's pushed out at the 45 by Eric Coleman. But the running of Ontario Smith has been the story here tonight. The Cougar defense had this play call stopped. Pursuit. To the strong side, and then they over pursue. And the field condition, the wetness on the field, combined with the cutback ability of Ontario Smith, puts Oregon in Washington State territory. 40 yards there. Now a buck 75 for the transfer from Tennessee. He had off the field problems. Has a second chance from a football standpoint, getting his life in order and his game as well. Here he is again, dancing, undeterred. A helmet lost in there as Smith gained about three yards. So we mentioned Ontario's problems after he transferred from Tennessee. He was uh, involved in a marijuana arrest and a misdemeanor battery charge that he was acquitted of. But the combination of off-the-field problems piled up, and uh, he left school there in Tennessee, came here and got the opportunity at Oregon. And the second chance is uh, something that's not uncommon when a young man makes an immature mistake he's getting it and thriving not just on the football field but off it as well second and six two tight ends one back Howry got a block from Parker nowhere to go gain of one third and about five coming up oh the ball came free and it belongs to Wazoo can't believe it. Bilotti's out there. So is Harrington. Harrington still talking to the official. Incredible. Keenan Howery secures the football. It's a catch. 
And then the reverse spin gets him into trouble. And that ball did come out. That might have been Al Genito in the middle linebacker with the strip. No, nope. it was Jason David. Wow. <laughs> and the reverse spin move back inside got Keenan Howery in trouble. That's a safe pass play. Keenan Howery, the experienced veteran, and he expected him to hold on to the football. Washington State opportunity from the 40. Here is Gesser. He's looking down the middle. He's looking long for Bush. Incomplete Minnick out there coming down the sideline as well. The running back out of the backfield. Bush coming across the field. Wow, Washington State looking for the home run to try to even this thing up quickly. And, and I don't necessarily agree with that play call, Mike. 9.14 to go here in the fourth quarter. You need to move the chains. You need to take advantage of the momentum you've created with the running game and Dave Minnick. Certainly the momentum has swung in the last half hour in Pullman. Minnick, it's been the quick hitting running plays that have worked in the second half, but not there. Darrell Wright, Fort Pierce, Florida. Makes the play. And a third and long coming up. And that's why you said that after first down. Now you're in third and eight and a half here. Yeah, if you're going to pass on first down, have some different options at different levels in the secondary where you can come down to an intermediate range route or underneath and take advantage of Minnick's running ability. They put you in a second and long and potentially a third and long situation. Empty backfield. See if Argon heats him up. Here comes five on five. The blocking's there. Gesser has time. It's caught. McElrath, first down, Cougars. Well, if there's any doubt about Gesser's ability, watch him slide to his left and throw a dig route back to his right. That is a beautiful play in a big situation. Third and long, trailing by seven points, and maybe a number five or number six BCS standing position on the line. Do they dip into their bag of tricks at any point in this drive? From the 44. Guess her to Bush, first catch, five yards. Ankle tackle from Bowman. Now that's more like it. Now you have to give some respect to Bush and, and McElrath on the outside and take advantage of that cushion. Put yourself in a second and four, second and five situation. Now you have the option to pound away with Minnick or go up top with play action. Yes, sir. On the pump. Looking deep into double coverage for Riley. It is almost intercepted. Nicola McElrath on the other side was open. Well, and this was so well played by both the cornerback, Bowman, and the safety, Keith Lewis. They did not bite at all on the move outside by McElrath or the arm fake by Gessman. Third and five, and even though it's a one-score game at the 39, it's an interesting four-down territory thought. You don't have to make the decision just yet. Mike hopes he doesn't have to. Definitely something to think about, though, and you want to be thinking in, the, in, in advance. Well, they tried the quick hitter with John Tippins, who's not done anything on the ground tonight, and he's stopped by Darrell Wright and company. Now it's not fourth and, well... Let's see it. They may just give him forward progress here, and it would be fourth and six. They're going to punch it away at 7.02 with a full complement of timeouts. And, and the reason why Mike Price is so frustrated, you hate to punt the ball in this position on the field because if, with the field condition and the ball skipping, if it goes into the end zone, you only pick up 20 yards of field position, and you don't get a shot at picking up the first down. Keenan Howry awaits Allen Cox's kick. Trying to pin him inside the 20. Get the cover men down there. That's tumbling forward. No chance. 
as you alluded to, David, just 20 on the net. Joey Harrington and company have at their own 20 after this. Game day band. We are the game day band. And we're back. Big Ten football. College game day. Thursday nights at 7 on ESPN. All right, Mike, hour 32 of ESPN Radio's Hands on the Heisman contest continues, and so far we don't see any quit in any of these contestants. <laughs> Except for me. They quit soon. 32 hours. This is amazing how long they can stand there, let alone stand with their legs, and then hang on to something as well. It's very impressive so far. I couldn't do this. It's not so much the endurance. It's the ability to withstand the boredom. <laughs> For a check of the ESPN radio station near you, go to ESPNradio.com. Hi, I'm Jeff Kent, and I'm here to talk about ESPN the magazine. You know, when they first asked me to do this, I was pretty excited. They could have had just about any athlete. So to choose me is really something. It's humbling to be able to give something back. So all you young players out there, listen up. ESPN the Magazine is only a dollar an issue. They'll even throw in a free fleece. That's right, Jeff. Every when you call 1-800-504-6644, you'll get 26 issues for just a dollar an issue. So call 1-800-504-6644. Thanks for listening to me. Director Jeff Wynn, producer Jim Ressler, Mike Tirico, David Nori. Glad you've joined us for, uh, as advertised in terms of competitive nature of the game, much lower scoring thanks in part to the windblown rain that has fallen throughout here in Pullman. From the 20, it's Ontario Smith, who's been the star tonight. 7 to the 27, Maurice Morris still sidelined with his hamstring injury that he suffered on a long run. Late stages, third quarter. Well, as we mentioned earlier, no drop off with Ontario Smith in the game. In fact, I think Smith has been every bit as effective or more effective than Morris. And the tremendous job that the Oregon offensive line has done in this game, still Smith is getting a lot done on his own. And there's a look at the hamstring injury to Morris earlier in the fourth quarter. Morris has a buck 38, Smith 186. Adds to it on second and three, with a lot more than three, with a lot more than three, might go all the way. Ontario Smith, what a game, touchdown! 73 yard touchdown, Ontario Smith. Wow, about that. Obviously a career high because it's a school record single game rushing performance for Ontario Smith here tonight. Extra point is added by Siegel. Bobby Moore, better known as Ahmad Rashad, used to have the record, but now it's Ontario Smith. Most rushing yards in a game by a duck. 259, including this 73-yard touchdown. There's only one neighborhood where the legends compete in the greatest games in history, ESPN Classic. Only ESPN Classic has the greatest games from the NFL, baseball, NBA, NHL, NASCAR, and fights from the largest boxing library in the world. Call 1-800-CLASSIC to get all your favorite classic sports. Plus, Sports Century, the Emmy and Peabody Award winning series that profiles the top 50 athletes of all time and beyond. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC today. Catfish, what a great arm. Who is that kid, anyway? Of course he's got a great arm, Buttermaker. He's the best athlete in the area. But you don't understand. That's Kelly Leak. You guys talking about Kelly Leak? Yeah. That dude is a bad mother. Talking about a loan shark. 
I borrowed a nickel from him last week. He said if I can give him a dime by Friday, he'd break my arm. That's who bandido. Baseball tonight, every night at 10 and midnight on ESPN. Now, your first source for round-the-clock sports news is even better. The new ESPN News. A brand new look with the enhanced bottom line that's always on and lets you know what's ahead. Constant score updates and live in-game stats. Highlights, news conferences, analysis, and more. The new ESPN News is here. It was against Utah on September 18, 1971, when the then known as Bobby Moore had 249 yards. Here goes Ontario Smith on his way to a school record 259. Not one, but two cutbacks to the right set up the run, and... The acceleration from almost a standstill position in the backfield, that's unbelievable. I mean, this kid is a sophomore, and if he keeps playing at this rate, I don't think he's going to be around for his senior year in Eugene. Now down 24-10, needing to make something happen. The tackle's broken, and a nice job on the kick return by Nettles. Curtis taking it out to the 27 yard line. Wazoo will have 70 yards to go. Three timeouts, 526 left. Watch the two cuts. The left foot plant and then again to the outside. And that is some kind of acceleration. Ontario Smith has been the difference maker and has shocked this Washington State crowd. There you see the record performance. Gesser on first down. Looking for the answer. Bush breaks wide free. He caught it at the 20. Still going. It's down at the nine. Before you're ready to tell us our dream season is over, hold the phone, says Wazoo. And how do you let a wide receiver get this far behind the secondary with a 14-point lead and five minutes to go? That's Webster, number 22, to free safety, number six, Smith. And they're beat by a good six to eight yards. And that Mike ball Bush, couldn't come down quick enough for him. <laughs> he, he could almost made a fair catch signal. 62 yards on the pass and catch from Gesser to Bush. This play will take us inside of five minutes. Washington State trying to get back within one score. Pitch Minnick. Nice play by Kevin Mitchell, sophomore, Orange, California. Marker in as well. Over on the side where the play was being run. Not a good time for Washington State's third penalty of the game, first of the half. Yeah, with the stop and and then the flag, and Jason Gesser and Mike Price know they're going to have to put the ball in the air. Titans, Steelers, Steelers leading the AFC Central, a division game on Monday Night Football, six Pacific, with Al, Dennis, Melissa, Eric, and of course, one of the great Oregon quarterbacks of all time, Fauci. Dan Fouts. Yeah, he was pretty fond of going to Bobby Moore, the, the ex record holder, until Ontario Smith took over tonight. And the 18 guesser eludes the pressure twice. Now he's got to run with it. He's over the line and gained three yards. But a very solid play by Gesser, who came into the lineup for the first time a couple of years ago and it was a game against Hawaii. It was not a good Washington State team. It was a bowl bound Hawaii team. As you see time permitting the thrifty car rental post game report with John and Terry. But Gesser came into that game and was successful against Hawaii and the players saw that he played through injury and he was so hard nosed and tough. And Mike Price said right then we knew we had a guy who could be a team leader. He knew the skill was there but he saw it. He wanted to beat Hawaii so bad because a lot of people weren't happy he left the islands. Quick hit is caught. Nice move by Riley. And another one. And Riley scores. Wow. It 
it took a little while, but now it's getting really fun. On the Dunning extra point. Same situation we had about a minute ago. <laughs> One touchdown lead for Oregon. Jerome Riley's had a very nice night. Four catches, 49 yards. And that is second touchdown of the season. Yeah, he's a tremendous future for Jerome Riley. He took a hitch about 60 yards against Cal early this year. Gave the offensive coaches an idea of what he could do. And how about the two broken tackles? You can't do a better job of running after a catch in a big situation than Riley just did. And it looked like this game might have been over after the Smith breakaway touchdown run. Gesser with the home run ball to Bush. And then Riley, what a play. Very little phases, Jason, as you can see there. Very loose. Oregon State has uh, nine players up within 20 yards of the kickoff. Just worried about an onside kick, but there's plenty of time with all the timeouts. They'll go deep and uh, let Oregon use the long field. Yeah, with this weather and field position being so critical, you don't want to waste all that field position on an onside kick. And remember, both teams have their full complement of timeouts to work with in the final four minutes and 20 seconds. Mike Bellotti's offense, David, 420 rushing yards. Here's the Chrysler drive summary for the Washington State score. They had a quick hit after Ontario Smith's quick hitter against them. Unbelievable how Mike Bush exploded and got behind the Oregon secondary. Ontario Smith, the record holder, takes it across the 25 and just pounds people getting near the 30. They want the ball out on the Washington State side, but it's firmly in the midst of the sophomore Smith. Clock is stopped. Injury for Oregon for a moment. I believe it's the fullback line. Josh Line, senior from Springfield, Oregon, shaken up. We should give him a lot of credit on a night. We have 429 yards, a school rushing record as well. Going back 41 years, the fullback did a pretty good job in the O-line as well. Now the O-line's really moving people around in Ontario Smith. I and mean, Washington State needs to get some extra defenders up on the line of scrimmage. Second and inches. Smith has the first down across the 30 to the 32-yard line. The clock will restart after the down markers reset. We'll take it inside of three and a half. It appears as though the rain has gotten heavier here as uh, this second half has gone on. A critical set of downs coming up on three and a half to go and the clock moving here in the fourth quarter. If Washington State doesn't get a stop here on this set of downs, they got to start using those timeouts. Let's see if they can get those linebackers and safeties even closer. Two's getting the ball. Here he comes. First contact made after four yards. Washington State will let the clock run down. And you don't want to use the timeouts quite yet. Maybe after the next down, if you get a good stop on a running play here, that is if Oregon chooses to keep the ball on the ground, then you might use a timeout because you put a bind on Oregon on, on the third down play. They have to put the ball up an incomplete pass and you save that second timeout. So if you're going to use a timeout on this set of downs, you do it after the second down play. Washington State, Mike Price thinking that over on the sideline right now. Hats off to these very diligent fans who have stayed here through miserable weather tonight. Second and five. Steady die to Smith. Still making men miss. He is right at the marker. It's very close to a first down at the 218 mark. Where they mark it, I think he's got a first down. They'll measure 
but Mike Bellotti's team may be two first downs away from a five-way tie. Five-way tie in terms of the loss column in the Pac-10. Huge measurement. It's an understatement because if this is a first down, 25 seconds come off the clock before the snap of the football, and we've only got 2.18 to go here. He got it. Ontario Smith, 276 yards tonight. And I think Mike Price will let the clock run here and then use a timeout after the first down play. And safe to say the game's on the line right now. Tight game in Tucson. They're tied. Oregon State has won. UCLA not from the ranks of the unbeaten. Perhaps Washington State the same fate here. Washington and Arizona State get underway at Sun Devil Stadium shortly. Correction on Smith. That last carry took him to 281. Only a couple there. Washington State will take its first time out here at the 147 mark, fourth quarter. So, updating the standings through the day and the importance here, if Oregon holds on, we'll have five teams in the Pac-10 with one loss. And some may say dreams of a national championship out of the Pac-10 gone, but not totally. You have, as mentioned, Miami, which still has games against Boston College, and obviously better than we thought Syracuse team. And a December 1st game at Virginia Tech. Opportunities to lose. You have uh, Nebraska still facing Colorado, a Big 12 championship game perhaps. BYU may be the one team that goes undefeated, but I don't know if BYU and an undefeated season can get up to number one or two in the BCS standings. Well, one of the one-loss teams might jump ahead of BYU with the strength of schedule. And if you look at if you look at a couple of the one loss teams teams like Michigan and Texas you know, those are teams that can definitely have a shot of moving up and getting into a position to play for the national championship and you, you were talking about BYU that in the BCS standings the first one that came out we're gonna have more they did not crack the top 15 and only the top 15 are computed so that's going to become the focus now in the conversation if Bilotti's team hangs on here. And then Oregon starts looking at Michigan and Texas and Florida and all the one-loss teams whose one loss was the best loss. Right, and you, and you also, of course, have Oklahoma and Florida in that one-loss mix as well. Absolutely. That's ahead. There's still a buck 47 here. Second and eight. It's Smith. That time they jumped it. Billy Newman made the play. It only took six seconds. And now you're going to have third down coming up. And really one play for the Cougar defense to hold on tight. So take them down to one timeout. Well, we've uh, opened the gates and let the horses out here in the fourth. After an Oregon field goal, Minnick over the top for the touchdown. Then the record night by Ontario Smith continuing with a 73-yard scamper. But Gesser came right back. The long pass to Mike Bush. The touchdown by Riley to make it 24-17. They answered in less than a minute and 20 to keep this one possession game. But the continued running by Smith, 283 yards, is the reason Oregon has a chance to slam the door here. Washington State defensively looking at a third down stop here, and this is the game. If they can stop Oregon, they're going to have plenty of time on the clock. Remember, the clock stops on first downs in college football, so even if Washington State gets the football with poor field possession, they'll be able to bring it down the field with plenty of time. And if Oregon chooses to try to throw the ball here on third down for the first down, and it's an incomplete ball, and Washington State gets to save that last time out for a drive coming back the other way. It's a game on the line right here on this next play. On a night when Oregon has run for a school record, obliterating the school record, 445 yards on 47 carries. They need seven for a first down. Do they do it on the ground, or do they let their senior Heisman Trophy favorite, Joey Harrington, try to do it? They run with Smith. 
who stopped and pulled down. Ryan Long pulled him down, got a left fist full of jersey. Wazoo stops the clock and stops Oregon with 94 seconds to go. Heck of a play by Ryan Long because Ontario Smith had gotten by him and he had a handful of jersey but that arm strength was just able to bring Ontario Smith down and now Jason Gesser and his offense get just one more shot. They're probably going to get a chance to Joey Harrington, Joey Harrington's team. Try one of those come from behind big runs. Even though there's plenty to still decide, we can firmly confirm our Chevrolet players of the game. I think at 285 yards on 26 carries, we can comfortably say Ontario Smith and Jason Gesser has been solid here in the second half after nothing was available in the first half. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Do you go after this punt, knowing two were blocked last week, and you have good special teams pressure? No, I don't think it hurts you. E either way you play it, you got to make sure that your punt returner secures the football. And Jason Gesser has looked at two, not one, but two 14-point deficits in the second half. And he has done one heck of a job bringing this team back, making big throws time and time again when the Cougars need it. They're loading up on the end. Here they come, and they almost got to it. They run into the kicker, but they say no flag. It is fielded back at the 12 by Colin Henderson. Made a man miss, tries to pick up a block, but because they went for the punt block, there's no blocking there. The fullback, Josh Line, made the tackle at the 13. You know what, even though the kicker, Arroyo, went down, he did a great job of getting rid of it. It would have been a five-yard penalty if it was contact. It wasn't roughing, so all in all, good decision by the referee. Taking a look at the Cougar two-minute offense over the course of the year. 14 drives and 19 of those drives were drives where they're just trying to run the clock down. Gesser underneath center. First play. Down the middle. There goes McElrath. Couldn't get out of bounds. He's out at the 37. 23 yards. Clock stops to move the down marker. 111 to go. Beautiful catch in weather. I mean, he had to extend his hands out. That was a beautiful play by a wide receiver on Gesser's ball. Good mention of the weather. It's raining as hard as it has all evening in Pullman. Gesser for more. But McElrath again couldn't get out of bounds. Got nine yards. 60 seconds left, second and one. Now you don't want to use your timeout here. Get to the line of scrimmage and run a play. No need to throw the ball to the ground. Use your first down or your second down play here to take another chunk of yardage down the field. Yes, sir. Out Bush. First down. 48 yard line. 39 seconds to go. Yeah, well done. And that's that's a Mike Price coach team. That's an experienced quarterback at the helm. A lot of football squads, both in college and in the NFL level, might have come up to the line of scrimmage and thrown the ball to the ground. Washington State uses it as an opportunity to pick up yardage and stop the clock. When the spread offense is your personality, these things come easier. Absolutely. Not just physically, but mentally. It's the perfect offense for the two-minute drill. Still have a lot of field and not a lot of time. Gesser rolls for protection. It's covered downfield. Trying to make something happen. Just threw it away. 31 seconds left. Well, Gesser made a nice play to get out of the pocket there. He didn't get a lot of help from McElrath and his other receivers downfield. When you're a wide receiver, especially in this situation with a game and maybe a a Dayton Pasadena on the line. You need to do something decisive downfield to come open for your quarterback, especially when he's under duress. Such a tough situation for your DBs, too. It's rained all night. The field is slick. The last thing you want to happen is somebody behind you. One slip, one fall. Game could be tied. Second and ten. From under center. Gesser steps up. Bush at the 30. 25. It's a first down. The clock will stop with 21 to go. And they're going to have four shots at the end zone. Price wants to down it. 
Well, Gesser needs to make sure that if he throws the football, it's beyond the chains. You cannot get sacked, and you cannot complete a ball short of the chains. And they take one second to down it. 20 seconds remaining. It's second down. And not a bad time to throw the ball to the turf. For, you know, you can get a playoff there, maybe take a shot at the end zone. Now Washington State only gets three downs to try to work a first down or into the end zone. I think Mike Price might have wanted to just cool everything down, catch his breath, and talk to his quarterback. Play clock has started. It's at 20 and 19, 18. Why everybody was so lax there. Play clock down at 10. Personnel issues here. Now they better get a play yeah. called in us. It is second down, like you said. Second and 10. Here is Gesser. Passes caught by McElrath. At the seven. 13 seconds, one timeout. Trying to keep the perfect season alive. He's just going to down it right here. It's a smart move. Ready for play. Downs it with 11 seconds and three shots at the end zone from the eight yard line. Man, is this terrific. Washington State, if they come up with a score here, I think they'll be comfortable at home taking this thing into overtime. But first things first, and Jason Gesser needs to make sure of two things. Do not get sacked and do not complete a ball short of the goal line. This team lost so many close games last year. They have a chance to force one to OT. Gesser for 6-6, six, six, Bush incomplete. Bowman's 5'8", Bush is 6'6". Six, six. That's the advantage talked about all week after what happened against Stanford. That time, Bowman answered the challenge. Two plays to go. Yeah, Mike Bellotti saw a little of that last week. His All-American corner matching up against Teo Johnson, the tall wide receiver for Stanford and Natchez, the tight end. And now he's seeing some more of it tonight. Only time for two more plays, and both of them have to go into the end zone. Bargain gets pressure, maybe one play. If Gesser has to get out of the pocket, here he is in the pocket. He's looking. He fires incomplete and should have been intercepted. David Moretti dropped back in coverage, and maybe the help from the Washington State receiver knocked it away. We're down to a final play in Pullman. Well, on this final play, Mike, now the run option, Jason Gesser getting outside the pocket. His ability to run might make the difference. On second down or third down, you don't want to let the clock expire. Now Gesser just has to score however he can get it done. On a night with 930 yards, it comes to one play. It's lofted for Bush. It's incomplete. Oregon wins. And a fifth unbeaten has fallen on this shakedown Saturday, 2001. What a wild finish to a truly entertaining game. And the two comeback quarterbacks, Gesser and Harrington, exchange greetings on a night when it wasn't Harrington, but the record night of running, 446 yards. Mike Bellotti's team, which lost a heartbreaker at home last week, first loss since 97 at home, comes back for a huge win and has reopened the Pac-10 story. Well, Washington State got what they wanted on that last play. They got Bush isolated on a linebacker, Wesley Mallard. They had the matchup that they wanted. And number 18, Wesley Mallard, mm. late. <laughs> Bush had an opportunity to bring that football in and just couldn't hold on. That hand fighting is something that happens down at the goal line anyway. I don't think they're going to drop a flag no on way. that play unless it was flagrant. And Bush definitely had a shot to make the catch. Jason Gesser led his team down the field, though, with one timeout. 
No, Washington State will have UCLA come to the Palouse. Both teams having one loss. Mike Bellotti, do you hear us? I can hear you very well, we, yes. We only have 30 seconds. Uh, what a game for Ontario <laughs> Smith, 285 rushing yards. Absolutely. I mean, he, he made not only the amount of yards, but there were some key first downs that he converted a lot on his own. We ran the ball very well today. Washington State battled, but we came back, found a way to win. Yeah, everybody's got one loss. Enjoy November. Yeah, we will. We're, <laughs> we're a great November team. We're looking forward to it. Safe trip back, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. They have Bye. Arizona State at home next week, then at UCLA and Oregon State. Our final score. Oregon 24, Washington State 17 with David Norrie, Mike Tirico. Reminder, ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, keyword ABC Sports. Monday night.